Diana worked along a path in the forest. The girl passed through the trees, and dry leaves rustled beneath her feet. Soon, the path gave way to a wide forest road that ascended a hill. A little further, and she arrived at a triangular-shaped lake bordered by slender trees. The landscape was captivating, and Diana took pleasure in the view. Suddenly, Diana spotted someone floating on the water. Upon closer inspection, she realized they were ducks. It was the first time Diana had seen wild birds so up close. She sat on a small stump near the water, providing a good vantage point to observe the birds. Diana cherished such secluded and quiet places. Here, there were no people, cars, or any other noise. The girl could sit in silence for a long time, simply admiring nature. At that moment, Diana was 24 years old, having graduated from the Art Institute and taught classes there. She lived in an apartment inherited from her grandmother and was content with her life. In addition to observing ducks, she could also feed them. Hello, said a guy who had just approached her. She turned around and greeted him. Oh, good day. You come here often, I assume. Diana adjusted her hat, looking at the guest. Yes, I have a house nearby. I come here to relax and be alone with myself. Give it a try, he suggested, handing Diana a piece of bread for the ducks. She took a couple of pieces and tossed them to the ducks. They came to life, racing to get the food. How cute, Diana exclaimed. The ducks looked at the people with interest, anticipating more treats. Take some more, the guy said. Diana took more bread and threw it into the lake. I, Martha, and you, he looked up at her and their eyes met. Both realized they found each other attractive. I'm Diana, she replied. Arthur took the opportunity to shake her hand. Her soft and gentle palm felt very pleasant. Care to take a work? Arthur suggested. Diana glanced at the birds once more and then walked with Arthur along the wide trail that circled the lake. Is this your first time here? He asked in this particular spot. Yes. I sometimes go into nature to get inspired, see new landscapes, new colors. I'm an artist, Diana explained. Arthur smiled. He looked like a serious young man, around 30 years old. Short haircut, transparent glasses, and a neatly shaved beard. He wore a long coat and a burgundy scarf. Arthur worked as a regular manager at an advertising agency. His job involved finding people willing to share information about their services. The work was quite tiring, requiring constant phone calls, negotiations, and client attraction. Whenever Arthur felt the need for a break, he would retreat to the house his father had once bought. Here, he could always enjoy complete silence, take a work in the woods, and change his surroundings. Their stroll through the autumn forest unfolded in a pleasant atmosphere. Diana and Arthur engaged in casual conversation on various topics. Both noticed that their companion turned out to be quite interesting. Upon reaching the starting point of their work, the young people decided to exchange phone numbers. Diana returned home in high spirits. Nothing foreshadowed it, and fate gifted me a potential future husband. Such thoughts filled her mind. Nevertheless, Diana's age hinted that it was time to start a family and have children. She settled comfortably at her desk in her room. Sketches and drafts of future artworks for her students lay here. Sometimes, she would sit like this, holding a cup of tea and looking at the drawings. And then, in a single moment, a new idea would be born. Certainly, Diana, as a talented individual, dreamt of having an exhibition showcasing her own paintings. She envisioned spacious holes, the play of light from bulbs on the walls and ceiling. People, dressed beautifully, would walk through the rooms, stopping by paintings they liked, observing them for a long time, discussing and nodding meaningfully. Yes, these were dreams, seemingly distant and unattainable. Diana took a sip of hot tea, her eyes continued to gaze at the scattered sketches. The next day, Diana went back to the university where her students awaited. Today, 
they continued to explore the concept of academic drying. A week later, on the weekend, Diana's phone rang, and it was Arthur. Good day, Arthur said. Diana was a bit excited. She hadn't expected his call. Her heart raced, and her face lit up with a smile. They agreed to meet, this time choosing a cozy and quiet cafe. The waiter took their order, and the wind blew outside. Arthur joked, and Diana laughed. Gradually, the two young people grew closer. And then, one day, almost a year later, Diana prepared a delicious pie, baked chicken with potatoes, lit candles. Arthur opened a bottle of white wine and poured it into glasses. Diana sat at the table, taking one of them. Arthur mysteriously looked at her, then knelt down. Diana watched her heart stop in anticipation. She had no idea what Arthur had prepared for her. He reached into his pocket, pulling out his fingers, between which he held a small gold ring. Diana, marry me, he said in a short phrase. A few more seconds, and Arthur heard the coveted yes. The young couple got married following all the traditions and started living in the same apartment, specifically in Diana's inherited one. That's what the girl wanted. It was more comfortable for her here. Arthur worked and only returned home in the evening. Diana also spent four days a week at work, dedicating the rest of her time to her husband. The girl got so involved in building a family that she completely forgot about her painting. After a year of unsuccessful attempts to have children, Diana actively focused on her and her husband's health. She started attending sports classes, tried to cook meals only from good and healthy ingredients, drank more water, but all this didn't bring the desired result. Children still didn't come into their lives. A year later, Diana calmed down a bit, and Arthur helped her with that. Dear Diana, her husband said, we both need to let go of the situation. Relax. He held his wife close. Let's just live and enjoy life. And then, I believe, everything will work out for us. He looked into Diana's eyes. She looked at him hopefully and with faith. She agreed with her husband. Moreover, there was nothing else for them to do in this situation but to enjoy life together and live for themselves. Yes, you're right. We need to switch our focus. Do something else. Diana smiled. Take care of ourselves at last. Once, Diana and Arthur's parents gathered in their home. It was Mother's Day. Diana decided to cook dinner and invite her family. Guests enjoyed the dishes, praised the hostess, and then the men went out to smoke and discuss their work matters. The women continued their conversation at the table. Oh, you have it so good. Diana, Arthur's mother, Mrs. Gosnell, a woman around 50 with short black hair, said. She looked too authoritative and loved to control everything. She added, you should have had children with Arthur by now. It's been a while. Why are you waiting? Arthur is over 30, Mrs. Gosnell said. Diana was touched by her words, but she didn't show it. Yes, Mrs. Gosnell. Diana replied, I agree with you, it's about time, but God hasn't granted it yet. She said, yes, of course, it's tough to have children now. Look at Sarah, how she tried with Jerry, and all in vain. They eventually parted ways, yeah, she said, looking at Diana. The girl swallowed. It was unpleasant and even hurtful to listen to such conversations especially because she herself felt deeply about the matter. So, Diana, think about it with Arthur. Think and act. Mrs. Blossom, Diana's mother, laughed. Diana smiled in response. She didn't want anyone present to see how uncomfortable this conversation made her feel. The evening came to an end. The guests dispersed to their homes. Diana was clearing the table and Arthur lingered in the corridor with his mother. She was whispering something in his ear, as if giving advice. Diana approached the door and eavesdropped. Arthur, think about yourself. Think, she said almost inaudibly, I still have the right to see grandchildren. She continued, you're not getting any younger, and when will you raise children? So, 
let's go. As a last resort, my advice to you is to find a new partner, mom. Arthur protested, and why not? I'm serious, Mrs. Gosnell replied. Oh well, your father is waiting in the car, I'm off. Diana, goodbye, goodbye, Mrs. Gosnell. Diana replied, behind her friendly face. She concealed her disappointment from overhearing the conversation. Her mother-in-law bid farewell and left. Diana, overshadowed, returned to the sink where she was washing dishes. Mechanically, she performed the action. At that moment, an incredible sense of hurt, transforming into anger and simultaneous self-pity, tore her from the inside. The girl was ready to burst into tears. Arthur noticed it. What's wrong with you? He asked. You'll probably stop loving me soon. Diana spoke in a quiet voice. Why would that be? Arthur wondered, looking at his wife. If I can't give you children, she replied. Turning off the water, silence hung in the air. Arthur wanted to lie to her, but facing her gaze, he couldn't say anything that could comfort her in that moment. The fate of their family was still uncertain. Did my mom say something to you? He asked with a smirk. Don't listen to her. She's been asking me for grandchildren since I was in school. He deliberately lied, laughing at his own words. He wanted to turn it all into a joke, and it seemed he succeeded. Diana wiped her hands and hugged Arthur. Closing her eyes, she savored the warmth of his body and the feeling of security. However, Arthur, at that moment, looked down. Something had already crept into his mind, something he couldn't understand yet. Time passed. Diana's thoughts about children and her inability to conceive became more frequent. Watching mothers in the park, she silently envied their happiness and the ability to enjoy motherhood. Over time, attempts to get pregnant still ended in nothing. The girl didn't notice how she became more closed and detached from the outside world. She often immersed herself in her thoughts, not noticing what was happening around her. At work, she distracted herself from negative thoughts. Today, she made an effort to be fully immersed in her tasks. She returned home on time. Diana took out the chicken and put it in the oven to bake. Then, wanting to relax a bit, she filled the tub with hot water. She added bath salts to the water, took off her robe, and looked at herself in the mirror. There stood a nape kid, slender girl. Diana ran her hand over her stomach. She so desperately wished that a little person was already living inside her. Diana sighed and then immersed herself in the bath. The water was very warm, almost hot, enveloping her entire body. Goosebumps covered her shoulders. The girl completely relaxed and didn't notice when she fell asleep. When she opened her eyes, she saw a little boy in front of her. He was hiding behind a tree, laughing loudly. Diana started playing with him and went in search of him. But when she approached the tree, he ran away from her. Diana quickened her pace. She turned around and saw another boy, exactly the same. She went after the second one, and children's laughter echoed everywhere. She looked around, but couldn't figure out exactly where to look for them. She woke up from a light touch. It was Arthur. He had already written from work. Sensing the smell of baked chicken, he went in search of his wife. Through the partially open door, he realized she was in the bathroom. Darling, did you fall asleep? He whispered softly. Is the chicken not burning? He asked mischievously. Diana opened her eyes. Catching a whiff of the prepared food, she immediately leaped out of the bath, presenting herself to Arthur in a provocative manner. This is how my wife greets me after work, he said and lunged into the embrace of her wet body. Diana's laughter echoed. Oh, Arthur, you'll get all wet, she said. Well, so be it, Arthur replied. They went to the table for dinner. The evening ended with watching a movie. Under the covers, the two lovers cuddled in each other's arms. Despite the evening being filled with love and tenderness, the next day brought anxious thoughts, especially for Arthur. Once, when he visited his mother, he had to listen to her concerns about Diana's inability to become a mother. Arthur, you have to think about yourself. 
Time is passing, and you're not getting any younger. I'm not even talking about Diana, who almost has no chances left to have a child, Mrs. Gosnell said. I see you've lost weight. Diana doesn't take care of you at all. But can she take care of a child? She has only art in her head. Mom, don't start. Arthur tried to end this unpleasant conversation. Diana takes care of me. Besides, I can take care of myself. He said, son, I just want you to be happy. And for you to have a complete family. Mrs. Gustle spoke. Let Diana see a doctor. She added, she was completely sure about her son. Arthur returned home tense. It was uncomfortable for him to talk to his wife about such matters. However, knowing that Diana would probably agree, he suggested she undergo an examination. Diana, I've been thinking. Maybe we should get checked. Ha. Huh. What if we really need to adjust something? It would be even better. Arthur said. Diana looked at him and pondered something. Arthur thought he had offended her with his words. But at that moment, she nodded her head. Ness, Arthur, you're right. It's time to get checked to understand what possibilities we have. Diana said. She responded completely calmly, although she herself worried. What if they really couldn't have children because of her? Nonetheless, they decided that the wife would be the first to undergo the examination. So began the early wake-ups and trips to the hospital. During the various tests, Diana was very nervous and struggled to sleep for a long time. The couple continued their attempts to conceive a child, but the tests never brought positive results. Diana began to fear that the problem might indeed be with her. Gradually and imperceptibly, Diana distanced herself from Arthur. She felt as if he, like his mother, suspected her of infertility. This deeply saddened Diana, and the relationship between husband and wife began to deteriorate. Arthur stopped seeing the point in their life together. How did this happen? Just a year ago, he loved his wife very much. He was sure that he was bound to her for life. He cherished her and was afraid of losing her. And now, now he began to believe in the impossibility of building a full-fledged family with this woman. One day, a quarrel occurred between them after which Diana and Arthur drifted apart. It was autumn. Arthur decided to surprise his wife and pick her up from work. He drove up in his car, holding a bouquet of luxurious flowers, opened the door, and entered the university building. He knew that Diana would be coming down soon. It was five in the evening, which meant her workday was over. The familiar click of heels echoed. Arthur adjusted his jacket and raised the flowers slightly. However, when Diana emerged, she was not alone. A man worked beside her. He was telling her something, and she was smiling. Then, at one moment, the man stopped Diana and put his hand on her waist. This outraged Arthur. He decided to approach them, but the access turnstile prevented him from doing so. Arthur continued to observe, the shameless couple continued their indecent activities, not even hiding some way discreet. Diana removed the man's hand and, feeling embarrassed, headed for the exit. But the man grabbed her hand. At that moment, Arthur couldn't hold back and called out to Diana. She turned around and her face lit up with a broad smile. Arthur, she exclaimed, approaching him. She then said goodbye to the man and left with her husband. What a pleasant surprise. It's so delightful. Oh, the fragrance. Diana rejoiced. Together they got into the car. Diana admired the flowers, then thanked Arthur, but his serious expression prompted her to ask her husband about it. Arthur, what happened? Why do you look like that? Diana adjusted her hair. Have you already found a replacement for me? Arthur said irritably, what? Not understanding what he meant, his wife asked, what are you talking about? What replacement? Diana tried to understand what Arthur meant. That man who walked with you, who is he? He's flirting with you. Arthur asked several questions at once. He wasn't going to start the car until he figured out who this person was. Oh, come on, stop it. Diana replied, 
It's Mr. Harris. He teaches sculpture. He wanted to show me how sculpture should really hold a hand and what hands the students made. The girl laughed. If you had seen it with your own eyes, you would have burst out laughing. Diana spoke the absolute truth. Do you get along with him so well? Like best buddies? Arthur sneered. Diana set aside the bouquet and took Arthur's hand. It was cold. It was always like that when Arthur was nervous. Arthur, Diana said, I don't need anyone but you, really. You are very dear to me, a close person. You are the one I married, the father of our future children. I wouldn't want to see anyone else in your place. She concluded. Arthur looked at her with a hurt expression. Really? He asked, touching her cheek. You dare? He said playfully in a mock serious tone and kissed his wife. They headed home, opting not to cook and ordering food delivery. So, what do we have with the results? Arthur asked. I submitted everything. We have to wait for the results. They will come in two weeks, maybe a little later. Diana replied. Mm, great. You did well to get everything done quickly. Arthur said. After dinner, Arthur went to watch TV. While Diana returned to her room, she approached the table where her work materials lay and began sorting through the sheets with sketches of her drawings. She hadn't engaged in her creativity for a long time. There were sketches of a sunny glade in the forest and an image of a woman. She looked at Diana with a mysterious gaze, holding something that didn't belong to the familiar world. I wish I had something like that to help me have children. Diana thought, then she sat down turned on the lamp and began to refine the started drying of the woman. With great attention, she went over each line of the drying, added a bit of contrasting color and sunbeams. The time was nearing 11. It was time to go to bed. Diana made the bed and went to check on Arthur. He had fallen asleep with the remote in his hand. Diana didn't wake him. She just put away the remote, covered him with a blanket and quietly returned to her room. Diana fell asleep with positive thoughts. From the next day, the long days of waiting for the results began. Weeks seemed to drag on. The endless anticipation was tiring. Finally, after two weeks, Arthur's phone rang, and it was Mrs. Gosnell. Well, hello, son, how are you? She greeted the 35-year-old man. Doing well, mom, everything's fine. He replied, and how about Diana? By the way, have the test results arrived? She immediately inquired. Surely, she called only about this matter. Um, you know, mom, not yet. Nothing has come in yet. Diana hasn't informed me of anything. Alf responded, how haven't they arrived? So much time has passed. Maybe Diana deliberately isn't telling you anything. Mrs. Gosnell said, no. Mom, why would Diana do that? Arthur objected, because she doesn't want to let you go. Of course, she'll keep you at your wit's end. A mother doesn't just say these things. Mrs. Gosnell insisted. Think about it, son, think well. She added and hung up. Arthur frowned and approached the mirror, looking at his reflection. Two deep horizontal wrinkles were on his forehead. Yes, he had been working a lot lately. It's all because through work, Arthur finds fulfillment as a person and as a man. Remembering that soon it might be his turn to undergo examination, he sighed heavily. All these visits to doctors, certificates, and tests terribly exhausted him. Arthur splashed his face, checked the time. It was nearing 10 in the morning. Putting on his coat, Arthur left the apartment. He arrived at the office on time. In the first hour, he signed two contracts for cooperation with two companies. He had been negotiating for two weeks, and finally, they were ripe for a deal. Arthur stood up from his chair, worked to the mirror, adjusted his shirt collar, and tightened his tie. He smiled at his reflection. Arthur looked respectable, presentable, and successful. Arthur was very pleased and proud of his success. During the lunch break, he was summoned to the office of the company's CEO. Arthur, assuming it was another assignment, went to her for a meeting. 
Opening the door, he saw a woman in a pantsuit. The wide, grey trousers looked quite interesting on her. Arthur was pleasantly surprised by his boss's outfit. Although he didn't find it particularly interesting, the woman, around 40 years old, looked very attractive. Arthur was surprised by his ability to quickly assess the appearance of his boss. He didn't know why today he was looking at her differently. Good afternoon, Mrs. Hart, greeted Arthur. Did you call for me? He asked, sit down, Arthur, don't be shy, said the CEO. She looked at the snow falling outside the window. I wanted to thank you, Arthur, for the excellent work. She continued. She turned to him, and he looked into her eyes. For the first time in his life, he dared to look at this woman and scrutinize her intently. Arthur was very pleased to hear words of appreciation from her. Mrs. Hart continued, every month, I see that you are growing, and it makes me very happy. Finally, our company has someone I can rely on. She stated, of course, you can always count on me, replied Arthur. He was taken aback by the praise. The CEO smiled. I noticed that you've been staying late at work. Do you really enjoy what you do so much that you're willing to work over time and for free? She asked, taking a few steps toward Arthur. He felt a bit uncomfortable. The CEO was clearly talking to him in a less than professional tone. I'm for the quality of work. And that's it, replied Arthur. At that moment, for some reason, he thought about whether he had shaved well today and ran his palm over his chin. The CEO had been looking at him all this time. I'll give you a bonus tonight. But first, you must have dinner with me, she joyfully announced. Then she took a fur coat out of the closet. Arthur immediately jumped up to help her put it on. The boss thanked him. After closing the office, the two of them went to the nearest cafe where they served delicious food. Mrs. Hart, I'm afraid you might be overestimating me. Perhaps, let's leave it at that for today, Arthur said, trying not to delve into his work matters further. He didn't like talking too much about it. And at home, you're probably just as considerate, right? I'm sure your wife is crazy about you. Am I right, Arthur? She asked, Mrs. Hart, Arthur began. But the boss interrupted him, Lauren. Call me Lauren in a non-business setting. Just Lauren, she said with a gentle voice. Okay, Arthur said uncertainly. Lauren and Arthur had a pleasant lunch. And after, Lauren paid for both of them. Then they returned to work in the evening. Lauren again asked Arthur to come to her office. As promised, she handed him the bonus. Your wife is lucky to have such a husband, she said, handing him an envelope. Arthur remained silent but thanked her for the extra monetary reward. And everything is smooth in your family, right? Your wife doesn't get jealous, say, of your clients. She inquired, for some reason taking the end of Arthur's tie. Arthur felt a sudden warmth. No, we have a trusting relationship. He replied in a subdued tone. Yes, you know how to handle things, Arthur, she said. It's getting late. My wife must be waiting. Arthur said, not finding a better excuse to leave the situation quickly. Well then, until tomorrow, Arthur, Lauren said in a peculiar way. Arthur noticed it but didn't attach much importance to it. He generally tried to maintain professional distance in his communication with his boss, even though it was challenging. On his way home, Arthur thought about the unexpected lunch with Lauren, their conversation, that she was pleased with him, and that she considered him a reliable person. When Arthur returned home from work, the first thing he inquired about was the results of Diana's examination. Hello, dear, has the letter from the lab arrived? He asked, no results yet. She replied, setting dinner to warm, but no worries, we'll wait. There's still time, right? He said, trying to stay cheerful and casual. Of course, there is. Sit down. Just wash your hands, caring Diana said. Then, remembering today's events, she looked at her fingers. They were stained with gray pencil. The girl recalled her art projects. Recently, 
She had come up with some new ideas she wanted to put on paper. These thoughts lifted her spirits, making her eager to live. Several days passed, and the lab results still hadn't arrived. Diana began to worry, though she knew they would come sooner or later. Diana, her husband spoke one day. My question might sound a bit strange, but are you sure you went through with the tests? Maybe you got scared of the truth and decided not to do anything. He spoke calmly. Diana looked at him, and Arthur could see surprise gradually appearing on her face. What do you mean scared? Of course, I'm anxious, but you know I want children myself, and that's why I'm willing to go through all the necessary examinations. Diana replied, feeling tension inside. She didn't like Arthur's question. What did it mean? Did he not trust her? Or did he think she was deceiving him? Diana almost succumbed to a bad mood, but pulled herself together and added, I'll call tomorrow and find out how much longer we have to wait. They say results can be delayed. Feeling relief from her own words, the following week started with a multitude of different tasks. Arthur scheduled meetings, consulted those who came to his office. By the end of the day, he had worked enough and felt tired. Arthur unbuttoned his jacket and loosened his tie. Leaning back in his chair, he slowly swayed from side to side, staring at the ceiling. It was quite late. Almost all the employees had gone home. Only Arthur was still in the office. Today he had worked well, and tomorrow another contract had to be finalized. At that moment, the door to his office opened, and the boss appeared in the doorway. She stopped, observing Arthur. Lauren had long ago singled him out among all the employees. Arthur had immersed himself so deeply in his thoughts and desired solitude that when he saw his boss in front of him, he widened his eyes. However, he didn't change his position in the chair. He maintained his relaxed posture. Lauren approached him, circled from behind, and placed her hands on his shoulders. Soft fingers began to squeeze and knead his neck and shoulders. A pleasant wave rolled down off his back and chest. Lauren, what are you doing? He asked her. You're a valuable employee. Consider it a bonus from your boss. She joked, continuing to massage him. Oh, what a pleasant bonus. Arthur agreed, then placed his hands over hers. He felt the gentle skin of her hands and their warmth. A pleasant fragrance touched his senses. In a moment, Lauren was right in front of him, and a moment later, she sat on his lap. Arthur silently observed what was happening. Why don't you go home to your wife? She asked, examining his lips. I was just about to do that, but then you showed up. He said in a hushed voice, really? I see the opposite. You seem a bit gloomy. Did something happen? You're the coolest at work. In the managers and sales ratings, you're at the top. The boss noticed. Arthur didn't respond. He looked at her, at her beautiful, well-groomed face, the perfect gray eyeliner, the even complexion. The delicate pink lipstick seemed to invite a touch. Do you have problems at home? She inquired. Need money for something? I'll help. I'll give you. But Arthur stopped her holding her on his knees. Thanks for the offer. Everything's fine. With a boss like you, my financial situation is good. He said, smiling. Lauren continued to gaze at him. Then what is it? She asked again. She wanted to become closer to Arthur, more than just a boss. Why do you need to know? It's my personal matter. He said, although he secretly hoped Lauren would insist and inquire more. And that's exactly what happened. You do a lot for our company. I'd like to help you too, she said, looking at him meaningfully. Well, I have some life experience myself. She smiled, anticipating his story. Arthur couldn't take his eyes off her. Instead of answering her question, he suggested, how about we go to a restaurant? You must be hungry, or are you watching your figure? He tightly embraced her waist. Listen. That's not a bad idea, she said and stood up from his lap. Arthur managed to glance over her body. That's how Lauren and Arthur arrived at an expensive restaurant. 
Why didn't Arthur think about Diana at that moment? The waiter brought hot dishes and two glasses of wine. Arthur whispered something to the waiter, who then brought a couple of candles and lit them on the table. The couple had a great time. Later, Arthur drove her home. Before leaving, Lauren lingered briefly in his car. She wanted to make an unforgettable impression on Arthur. She took his hand. Thank you for the evening. I had a great time. She thanked him, squeezing his hand. Arthur silently listened, not taking any further steps. Lauren and Arthur bid farewell, and the boss got out of the car. Arthur inhaled the scent of her perfume. Inside, he began to feel a faint hint of a bright hope that his fate could still be changed. He pressed on the gas and, half an hour later, found himself at home. In the kitchen, he found Diana. She was drawing with a pencil on a large sheet of paper. Are you waiting for me? Arthur asked, fearing that Diana might suspect something. Hello, my dear. His wife embraced him. Yes, I was waiting for you for dinner, but you never showed up. Your phone didn't answer. I thought you were very busy. I couldn't wait any longer. I was starving. Diana said, are you hungry? She asked, yes. I had a long discussion with a client about a project, and then he decided to have a snack and invited me. I couldn't refuse him. We had dinner together. Arthur lied. And are you drying again? He asked, yeah. Inspiration struck. I need to catch up. Diana replied, I think I'll take a shower and go to bed. I'm just exhausted. Arthur said, kissing his wife on the neck. The evening came to an end. Already lying in bed, Diana nestled against him. Arthur embraced her, and they fell asleep in warm embraces. The next morning, Arthur went to work with more joy than before. He couldn't wait to meet with the boss who saw in him a promising and talented man. He felt that being with her made him capable of anything. He was ready to move mountains just to receive her praise. However, Lauren was not at work from the early morning. After a couple of hours, she still hadn't shown up at her workplace. Arthur started to worry. At one point, he even considered calling her personally, but then changed his mind. Finally, she appeared. Entering Arthur's office, she illuminated the room. Her gaze was cold. She maintained a straight posture, walking confidently. Her dark blue dress emphasized her curves. Arthur stood up from his chair. Lauren, he began, Miss Hart, don't forget, we are at work. She corrected him. Oh yes, Miss Hart, are you okay? He asked, yes, I just wanted to get some rest. She said, then walked to the door and locked it from the inside. Arthur eagerly waited to see what would happen next. He stood there, motionless, afraid to even breathe. She approached him slowly, like a wild cat from another planet in a blue dress with a deep neckline. A round pen hung on her chest. Miss Hart took another step and found herself 10 centimeters away from Arthur. He remained motionless, and only the pulsating blood in his veins indicated that he was alive. You look good, very good, she said, evaluating. But it didn't embarrass Arthur. On the contrary, he enjoyed hearing such words from her. I like you too. Arthur said in a soft voice. Her sun-kissed smooth skin tempted him to touch it with his fingertips. But he didn't dare because he was subordinate. And she was the boss. It was all so exciting. And it only stirred his blood even more. Do you want to touch me? Lauren suddenly asked. And at that moment, she was no longer the boss. She was someone deliberately seducing Arthur and trying to involve him in a forbidden game. Arthur licked his lips lowering his gaze to the exposed skin of the woman he said yes i want to saying this he felt the heat rising within him then do it she replied arthur dared to look into her eyes but couldn't bring himself to take any action miss hart felt a strange sensation on one hand it made her even more intrigued but on the other hand Arthur cast doubt on her confidence that she was truly so attractive that she couldn't settle anyone. The boss narrowed her eyes, as if to say, come on, be bolder. However, at that moment, 
There was a knock on the door of Arthur's office. Arthur, are you in? A voice of the secretary sounded. Miss Hart flinched. Natalie, I'm just doing a little work out here. I'll be out in a moment. Arthur replied. Miss Hart looked at him and smiled. After waiting for the secretary to leave, Arthur opened the door, checked the corridor, and then signaled to the boss that she could come out. When he was alone, he wiped the sweat from his forehead, looked at himself in the mirror, licked his dry lips again, took a few sips of water, and headed to the secretary. The workday went very well. For tomorrow, Arthur planned another deal. Perhaps it was a coincidence, but Arthur seemed to feel that thanks to Lauren entering his personal life, things were noticeably improving. He returned home in a great mood, full of plans for the future, plans for meetings, career development, and something interesting. Yes, Lauren managed to ignite a fire in him, awaken passion. Thanks to her, he felt ready and capable of making deals and taking actions. However, crossing the threshold of his home, he saw his wife's disappointed face. She was dressed casually, with a messy braid on her head. What happened? Is something bothering you? Arthur asked from the doorway and immediately felt her mood affecting him. Arthur didn't want to delve into this. After all, everything was fine with him. But why should he get involved in this? Nothing special, just not in the best mood. Diana replied, forcing a smile. She wanted to appear joyful, yet she didn't want to pretend at the same time. The kettle will boil in a moment, and dinner is in the oven, she said, heading to the kitchen. After a couple of steps, she turned around, approached her husband, kissed him, and then disappeared into the room. Arthur washed up and looked at his reflection. The image of the vibrant and enticing Lauren flashed before his eyes. When Arthur returned to the kitchen, Diana had already set everything on the table. How was your day? She asked. Oh, I'm so tired. You have no idea, Arthur replied. But it's rewarding to see that my efforts are not in vain. Arthur started eating. Only now did he realize how hungry he was. Is it delicious? Diana asked, a spark in her eyes. She was pleased that the casserole turned out well. Very, Arthur replied. After satisfying his hunger, he leaned back on the couch. A sound of a message on his phone interrupted the moment. It was his mother inquiring about the test results. Arthur pursed his lips, absent-mindedly, and asked Diana about it. No, I checked the mailbox. It's empty. She replied with a melancholic tone. Have you called the hospital? Arthur asked. I did. They told me to wait. Diana lied. In reality, she was already beginning to fear that the letter might bring unwelcome news, condemning her to a childless life. Well, then, I'll start getting tested too, so we don't drag it out and resolve everything sooner, Arthur said. His phrase, so we don't drag it out, resonated peculiarly within Diana. A sense of unease crept into her soul. Arthur, can I ask you one question? Diana hesitated. Of course, my dear. Arthur replied, what if it turns out that I can't give birth? Diana, at that moment, was afraid to look her husband in the eyes. If it happens that I really can never have children, will you? There was a brief pause. Will you leave me? Will you seek another woman? Answer me, I'll understand any decision you make, Diana said. He looked thoughtfully at Hutchin. Diana, I haven't honestly thought about that. It's such a complex question that you can't answer it right away. It's... Diana, for some reason, hurriedly interrupted him, perhaps afraid to hear the truth that could cause her pain. Understood. Okay, you're right. It's indeed a complex and profound question. Diana seemed like she wanted to say something more, but her sentence ended there. After dinner, the young couple went to bed. Arthur almost immediately fell asleep while Diana continued lying, staring at the ceiling. Various thoughts, different scenarios for her future life, and her life with Arthur came to her mind. The week was coming to an end, and during this time, many meaningful tasks were accomplished. 
Diana diligently prepared for the A-Day-in-My-Life painting competition with her students. On Friday, the results were announced, and many works received the highest scores. In the end, the university director personally thanked Diana in front of everyone for her efforts and significant work with the students. I'm very pleased and immensely grateful to you for working in our university. It's a huge asset for us. Therefore, Diana, I'd like to ask you to come to my office after the event for special thanks. Diana never expected such a significant response for her work with the students. She sincerely rejoiced in the impact she had on people. Returning home, Diana was showered with compliments and well wishes for her personal life and future projects. Upon opening the apartment door, she realized there was no one at home. She undressed and went to the bathroom, remembering Arthur, assuming he was either working late again or having another meeting with a client. She recalled the dinner she had bought on the way home. After emerging from the water and wrapping herself in a robe, she went to the kitchen to heat up the food. As she glanced at the table, she noticed a stack of magazines. Diana moved them aside and saw a letter addressed to her among them. It was from the laboratory. A slight wave of excitement surged within her. With delicate fingers, she opened the envelope, unfolded the letter, and her eyes raced across the lines. When she reached the most crucial part, Diana read it, then paused, and read it again. In the letter, in the concluding line, there was an unsettling diagnosis. In Diana's mind, it sounded like a sentence. Gazing at the walls of her home, she pressed the paper to her chest, as if wanting to hide it, just so Arthur wouldn't find out. She thought she was so stunned by the diagnosis of infertility that she didn't fully comprehend how to react. Entering her room, she hid it in her bag's farthest pocket. Her heart was pounding wildly. Diana returned to the kitchen, sat at the table, trying to calm down and act as usual. The time was approaching 8 p.m. Diana called Arthur, but his phone went unanswered. She had gotten used to such things, but this time, she was glad to be alone. This way, she could calm down, be alone with herself, and come to terms with the received information. Meanwhile, Arthur concluded negotiations with the client, who left satisfied. On Arthur's table lay a signed contract for long-term collaboration. Today, Arthur was content with his work. His phone rang, and he was surprised to see that his boss was calling. He answered promptly, yes, Miss Hart, replied Arthur. Listening to her speech, he narrowed his eyes. Understood, I'll be there without fail, replied Arthur, hanging up. He lingered for a moment, lost in thought, then took off his jacket from the chair, grabbed the keys to his office, and headed. No, not home, but straight to the address his boss had given him. When Arthur arrived at the building, he discovered that this place couldn't be classified as an ordinary restaurant. Descending to the basement, Arthur passed a face control check, and then heavy burgundy curtains were drawn before him. Music played, and subdued light illuminated the space. Arthur walked slowly, searching with his eyes for the one who was the reason for his visit. Finally, he locked eyes with her. She was simply enchanting. Arthur approached her unable to believe what was happening to him. Lauren looked absolutely stunning. She wore a tight, long red dress, and her shoulders made her look cute and vulnerable. Arthur approached Lauren and extended his hand in a gesture of greeting. She placed her hand on his, and Arthur kissed it. You're beautiful, my lady, he said, looking directly into her eyes. He gazed into them and saw life saw passion and the desire to love. Thank you, Arthur. I'm very glad you didn't leave me here alone. Lauren spoke. I confess, you've left me bewildered. I'm disarmed, embarrassed, and in love all at once. Arthur confessed. With her eyes closed, the woman smiled in response, then lifted a glass of wine. They clinked glasses and took a few sips. Arthur couldn't take his eyes off Lauren. She stirred a storm of emotions and a tremendous flow of passion within him. A conversation ensued between the two. It was light and easy. Arthur tried to joke, while Lauren slyly smiled. 
she flirted and behaved femininely, light and playful. Then the light became even dimmer, and eventually, it went out entirely. Arthur took Lauren's hand and squeezed it gently. Lauren looked at him. Arthur's gaze ran over her body. The woman liked it. She responded with a languid look, indicating what she desired. After spending a short time in an exclusive restaurant not meant for everyone, the couple moved on. Where exactly? Lauren suggested taking a little ride around the city. Arthur agreed. Of course, now he was agreeing to a lot, very much. After a night drive through the city, Lauren asked to drop her off at her place. Arthur obediently followed her commands. When they arrived, she said, Don't you want to come in for a while? She uttered, I live alone. Lately, I've been having trouble sleeping. Let's sit and chat, she said. But Arthur didn't need unnecessary words. He would be very happy to spend time with such a woman. The door to the apartment opened. Darkness greeted them. Arthur helped Lauren take off her coat. And at that moment, something seized him. He embraced her by the waist and nestled against her neck. The scent of her perfume, mixed with the fragrance of her skin, intoxicated him so much that when Lauren tried to loosen his grip, she was surprised by his strength. This only fueled her desire even more. Finally, Lauren freed herself from his embrace and headed to the kitchen. Arthur followed her. He noticed that her apartment was very spacious. Lauren poured some drinks and, holding a glass, turned to Arthur. He approached her and, placing his hands on the table, unclosed the woman in some boundaries. Lauren placed the glass on the tabletop and directed her gaze at Arthur. He, feeling a bit shy, examined her neck, her shoulders, her chest. He understood what she expected from him, and she would undoubtedly get it. Lauren placed her hands behind her on the tabletop. Arthur touched her chin with his fingers, then descended a bit lower to her neck. He felt her tender skin. Lauren was waiting for the continuation. Arthur's hand slid down her abdomen, and then he grasped her slender waist with his fingers. Holding his boss in both hands brought a special pleasure to Arthur. The man looked into Lauren's eyes, and she responded to him with a challenge. Her lips, painted in bright red lipstick, attracted attention. Arthur once again cupped the woman's chin. The first time, he gently traced his fingers over her lips. And the second time, he smeared the lipstick on her cheek before eagerly pressing his mouth to hers. Arthur held the woman's neck firmly, and it filled him with incredible strength and passion. Seating Lauren on the table, exploring the charms of the female body, Arthur surrendered to the hot desire yielding to the temptation. Arthur returned home only by lunchtime. Diana had already started to worry and was about to call his mother since his phone was turned off. Oh, finally. Arthur, where have you been? I was starting to worry, she said, greeting her husband. Sorry, I got caught up with work. We finalized a deal with one of the clients late. Then my mom called, asking me to come over and I completely forgot about everything. Besides, my phone died. How are you, my dear? Arthur explained. Diana listened attentively, but in her mind, there was the letter she had hidden, and which Arthur might have seen. He continued, and then I was at the hospital. I got some tests done to speed up the process. Indeed, early in the morning, when he woke up with Lauren, he looked at the clock in horror. It was eight in the morning. He jumped out of bed, took a quick shower, and rushed to the hospital. Diana felt uneasy. She knew she had to tell Arthur the truth, but she couldn't bring herself to do it. Couldn't even think about it. Come here, I'll give you a hug, Arthur said. Diana hugged him, but she couldn't relax. Her eyes remained wide open. In them, there was fear. A dreadful fear of her future when Arthur learns everything. The day continued with lunch, and afterward, Diana suggested that Arthur go for a work. Despite the winter season, the day turned out to be warm. The couple strolled in the park, went to the movies together, and then visited an art gallery. Diana admired the paintings of a well-known artist, 
sometimes imagining herself in his place. While Diana was proficient at drawing, she couldn't decide whether it was a lack of courage, time, or energy that prevented her from advancing further. After deciding to grab a bite, Arthur took his wife to a cafe where he had recently been lunching with Lauren. The waiter brought their dishes, and Diana admired the interior. Delighted to be here. We haven't been here before. How did you find out about this place? Diana inquired. Well, a colleague and I stopped by here once, and we liked it. So, I thought of bringing you here. Arthur explained, referring to his colleague, who was, in fact, his boss. Diana started on her second course. Arthur inadvertently turned his head to the right, and, oh god, he locked eyes with her. Seated almost at eye level with them was Lauren, and across from her was a man. Lauren briefly held her gaze with Arthur before returning to her conversation with the man. Diana noticed. Do you know her? She asked when she saw Arthur looking at the woman. No. Well, yes, she's my boss. Arthur honestly replied. Got it. Diana said, not attaching much importance to the situation. The couple returned home in the evening. Both were tired, but nonetheless satisfied with the day. The evening concluded with watching a movie and falling asleep. Midweek, Lauren asked Arthur to come to her office. So, are you ready for some praise? She said cheerfully, you've exceeded the plan, and a bonus has been credited to you. Are you happy? She asked, getting up from her chair and approaching Arthur. She playfully took hold of his tie and wrapped it around her arm. You're my best employee. I'm very proud of you, she said, moving closer to his lips. I'm glad you're satisfied, said Arthur, who, after a night spent with his boss, seemed to have gathered some courage. This Friday, you're flying with me on a business trip, she declared after a kiss on the lips. At that very moment, a knock came at the office door. The secretary entered, finding the boss and Arthur in very close proximity. She cleared her throat and apologized. Excuse me, Lauren, Mr. Puth is on the line. What should I tell him? She inquired. The boss pretended to adjust Arthur's tie. What's with your appearance, Arthur? She teasingly asked, then added, You can go. Addressing the secretary, she said, Connect me with him, Natalie. Then she returned to her chair, picked up the phone. Upon hearing Arthur's announcement about a business trip for the weekend, Diana reacted calmly. After all, she couldn't forbid him to go there. Work is work. The business trip days went successfully. Attending two meetings, Lauren managed to secure two more clients. Arthur also participated in the negotiations. During the business trip weekends, the couple stayed in a double room. After finishing all the business in the morning, they enjoyed each other's company. Once, lying in bed, Lauren asked Arthur about his wife. Not that she was extremely interested but she was curious to know how Arthur was doing in the world of his family life. Arthur, tell me, was your wife there at the cafe with you? She asked, yes, that was my wife. Arthur replied, sighing, what's her name? Lauren continued, sitting next to Arthur. Arthur ran his hand along the woman's waist and then answered, Diana, that's her name, Diana. So, Diana, Lauren repeated, do you love her? She asked again. Arthur responded after a brief pause, now gazing at the ceiling. I think so. I love her, he said, feeling the warmth of the woman's hand caressing his chest and abdomen. Why so melancholic? Lauren continued the conversation. She got up from the bed and poured orange juice into a glass. In relationships, things are never easy, Arthur replied. I understand daily life. Kids, all that, Lauren said, savoring the taste of the drink. She talked to Arthur about his personal life as if it were just a casual topic. On the contrary, Arthur replied, we haven't been able to have children so far. He sighed, and that's where all the discord begins. He also got up from the bed and drank some water. Lauren looked at him with such an understanding gaze, then said, come to me. Lauren embraced Arthur and pressed herself against him. She wanted to support him. 
Always remember that when you are ready, the doors will open for you on their own. She said, Arthur and Lauren melted into kisses. Arthur came home in a very good mood. It was a Sunday evening, and Diana greeted him joyfully. She had prepared a delicious dinner for his arrival, including Arthur's favorite dish, a fish pie. Arthur was delighted with his wife's culinary skills. As they exchanged kisses, both of them looked at each other, realizing that there were things they had to hide. When he returned from the bathroom, Diana was waiting for him at the table, smiling and holding an envelope. Well, what's this? Arthur asked, already guessing what it might be. Open it, his wife said, handing the envelope to Arthur. He took the envelope from Diana's hands, quickly opened it, and read its contents. From Arthur's expression, Diana understood that all his tests were normal. I see, Arthur said. Although I already knew everything was fine with me, he added, handing the letter to his wife. Now Diana could see with her own eyes that Arthur was indeed completely healthy. It undoubtedly pleased her, but at the same time reminded her of the answer she had received. She set aside the papers and, acting as if nothing had happened, suggested her husband start dinner. A mem Delicious. Absolutely amazing. He exclaimed. Diana smiled in response. I even missed a bit. She said, glancing at Arthur. Really? He teased, playing along. The couple shed a kiss, and then a silence hung in the air. Each of them was lost in their own thoughts. Arthur remembered the recent business trip and Lauren in her elegant outfits, while Diana was grappling with doubts about whether to tell Arthur the truth or postpone it a little longer. How was the business trip? Diana finally asked, Did you manage to make a deal with that difficult Mr. Lawson? She inquired, referring to the client from another city her husband had mentioned. Arthur initially furrowed his brows, trying to recall whom his wife meant. Oh, you mean Lawson? Yes, everything worked out. He wasn't as difficult as I thought. Nice guy. We understood each other without many words, Arthur said. After dinner, the family headed to the living room. Diana wanted to watch a movie together, the one she had chosen. Arthur agreed, and they comfortably settled on the couch. The wife was happy to be in the embrace of her beloved husband. You've been working even more, she remarked as the credits rolled on the TV screen. What can I do? The boss demands meeting the targets, Arthur replied. Diana caressed Arthur, kissing his shoulder. She longed for his affection and tenderness, unlike him. Eventually, Arthur dozed off, which Diana realized from his light snoring. Looking at her husband, she found him peacefully asleep. She got up, turned on the TV, and then returned to bed. The following week passed in the usual routine. Diana was concerned about her diagnosis, fearing that somehow everyone would find out about it. Tired of these thoughts, she called a friend and suggested meeting up. Her friend agreed, and on Friday evening, they met at a cafe. Diana waited for her friend at the table. Megan walked towards her, and her long coat fluttered around. The girl stopped and greeted her. Hello, my dear. I'm so glad to see you, she said, leaning in to kiss Diana on the cheek. Megan and Diana had been friends since school, sharing moments of jealousy crushes on the same guy, and helping each other with housing, providing support in difficult times. And now, once again, they found themselves in a situation like that. Hi, Diana replied. I'm so glad you agreed to meet my Megan. Even though you have a lot on your plate, Diana added. Oh, come on, Diana, stop, Megan said. I wanted to meet up with you too. And there's a serious reason. So, tell me, what happened to you? Maybe we should order something to eat first. Diana suggested. The waiter soon approached, took their order, and left. The atmosphere in the place encouraged an hurried and calm conversation. Oh, Megan, Diana exclaimed, looking at her friend sadly. I never thought this would ever touch me. Is it really that bad? Megan asked. The waiter arrived with their dishes, placed them on the table, 
and left the fingers. Diana began. I received a heartbreaking diagnosis. I can't have children. Silence fell. Megan stared at Diana and didn't say a word. She hadn't experienced motherhood herself yet and wasn't married, but she wasn't particularly eager. Her current life suited her just fine. Did the doctor tell you that? She asked. The first question that came to her mind. Well, of course, he's not a fortune teller. Diana replied. Megan remained silent for a while longer. So what? It's not a big deal. She suddenly said, not a big deal. Diana asked, genuinely surprised. My family could fall apart. I don't want to lose Arthur. I love him very much. She continued, is it mutual, your love? Megan asked. Diana was surprised by this strange question. Well, of course, what else? She replied, real love. Megan asked again, real love? Diana affirmed, well, if you're so sure about it, then Arthur will stay with you through any situation. Right. Megan raised her eyebrows, awaiting Diana's response. Diana thought for a moment. Well, it should be true. Diana said, okay, then the question is settled. Megan concluded, actually, I expected more support from you. Diana said, sounding a bit hurt at that moment. She felt a deep sympathy for herself. Diana, I don't know why you're so worried. Look around. We live in a time of advanced technology. She asked again, looking at her. Diana was silent, unable to come up with anything at the moment. Megan continued, I don't worry at all. I live for my pleasure. And when the time comes, I have a plan and I don't need to wait for anyone or beg anyone. She said, what do you mean? What are you talking about? I don't understand. Diana spoke. I'm talking about the era of new technologies, including in medicine and about having children. Megan replied. She looked full of strength and inspiration for life. She saw her future and knew where she was going. While Diana felt lost in the dark forest. I see that you don't understand me at all. Megan continued. Those who want to achieve a goal will seek and try any opportunities and options. So, if what I say sounds like nonsense to you, at least hear me out. Okay, Megan asked. Megan then told Diana about how other couples in similar situations handle it. Diana listened attentively, her mouth wide open, and don't be so surprised. We are already slowly moving towards this, but the time will come and we will go this way swiftly. Yes, remember my words. Megan assured, what should I do? Where do I start? Diana asked, look at me. Do I look like a doctor? Megan asked, I'll introduce you to a doctor. A good man, pleasant. You can discuss the most delicate topics with him. Megan said, you instill not only hope, but also confidence in me. Diana said, Thank you, my dear. It means so much to me. At that moment, her eyes became moist and shivers ran down her body. Diana, come on. What's the matter? Everything is fine. Your problem is not a problem at all. Megan said, taking Diana's hands in hers. Stop crying or I'll cry with you. She added, the two friends laughed. Diana couldn't believe the possibility of becoming happy after lunch. The friends said their goodbyes and headed home. Diana got into a taxi, lost in thought. Her gaze fell on her bag. She reached into it, pulling out the business card Megan had given her. Dr. Chase, a reproductive specialist, an expert in treating fertility issues. Diana sighed deeply and tucked the card into a discreet pocket. She returned home with joy. Now there was hope in her life a chance to have a happy and complete family. Arthur was occupied with something in the bathroom. Coming out into the hallway, he embraced Diana, holding his phone in hand. Hello, my dear. How was your chat with your friend? He asked, already aware of who Megan was. We had a great time, just chatting. Diana replied, yeah, I can see you're glowing. Arthur remarked, heading to the kitchen. 
He turned on the kettle, then sat on the couch, but immediately jumped up, offering tea to his wife. Arthur was clearly preoccupied with something. It seemed he was anxious or troubled. Yes, a cup of tea would be perfect right now. It's so chilly outside, and I bought lemon and ginger for a delicious tea, Diana said. But Arthur didn't seem to hear her. He was engrossed in his phone. Diana initially paid no attention until she realized he wasn't reacting to her. Arthur, she called. He was distracted. Ha, huh. what? Oh, wow. Even Ginger. Are you accidentally pregnant? He asked with a strange question. Diana chuckled. No. Why? Do pregnant women always buy Ginger? I don't know. You just don't like it. Arthur replied. Megan shared an interesting recipe. I want to try it. Diana responded. Fearing Arthur might recall the results of her tests, and it seemed he did. Oh, by the way. Haven't your test results come yet? Arthur asked. Diana froze. She was slicing the lemon with her back to Arthur. Until he could see, she closed her eyes. Um, I'll go there myself tomorrow. She replied. She understood that she would have to tell her husband everything very soon, but she wasn't ready for it. Arthur seemed to be getting suspicious, but despite that, he didn't want to initiate the conversation. He decided that Diana should be the one to tell him everything. Could my mother be right about Diana? And she really can't have children. Arthur wondered. However, his thoughts quickly shifted to a text message from Lauren. She expressed eagerness to meet him and mentioned having an important message for him. A smile appeared on Arthur's face, catching Diana's attention. Who is it? She asked, peering into his phone. It's walk related. A client sent words of gratitude. Silly guy thinks it's all my doing. Arthur laughed, trying to divert Diana's attention. She remained silent. What are we doing for Christmas? She asked. I don't know. I hope they let me off work at least. Arthur replied. What do you mean? You have an advertising agency. How can they not let you off? Diana clarified. I was joking. Of course, they let me off. Just a lot of work. He added. Another message arrived on his phone. But he didn't dare open it. That would certainly raise suspicion. We could visit our parents. Diana suggested thoughtfully. Or we could stay home. Just the two of us. Spend it in complete bliss. She continued. Holding Arthur's hand. He turned to her. And she met his guys. They exchanged kisses. Diana began to seduce Arthur. Caressing his back and abdomen. However. At this moment. Arthur didn't feel the same attraction towards her. After a while. Though. Diana managed to captivate him. They both burst into the room. Diana pulled Arthur's shirt off and pushed him onto the broad bed. His arms spread wide. Transformed into a temptress, Diana pounced on him, enveloping him in kisses, hugs, and passion. On Monday morning, Diana went to the reproductive specialist, the one whose business card she had in her bag. A pleasant receptionist greeted her at the front desk. Dr. Chase is currently busy. She said. The administrator suggested that Diana take a seat and wait for the doctor. She was a bit nervous. After all, not every woman would dare to go alone on such an issue. After 10 minutes, a man in his mid-40s, with a touch of grey hair, short cropped, and a slight beard, walked directly to her. His grey-blue eyes exuded calmness, and a friendly smile indicated trustworthiness. Diana greeted him and the doctor invited her to his office. After introductions, she described her situation, then handed him the letter with the test results. The man listened attentively, reviewed the documents, and then began typing something on the computer. After a couple of minutes, he addressed her again. Yes, Diana, I remember your call. I've just familiarized myself with your situation. Dr. Chase began, his voice was gentle and quiet. He continued the conversation. The thing is, Diana, you have a particularity in your body. I'm afraid to disappoint you, 
but conceiving a child on your own is impossible due to the conditions of your body. Diana interrupted him. Yes, I know I won't be able to conceive on my own, but we can undergo stimulation. And then, with your help, I'm confident it will work. Her eyes welled up with tears due to the overflow of emotions. Diana, I understand your desire, but the situation is a bit different. Listen to me. I want to tell you that, unfortunately, you don't have a fully developed egg cell for fertilization. Of course, I'm judging based on the information you provided, but if we go by that, the chances are extremely low. The doctor looked at Diana. And what does this mean? She asked. It means that the chances of conceiving a child from your egg cell are almost non-existent. I want you to be prepared for this. Do you hear me? There is nothing scary in what I am saying. People with this condition live their lives and continue to make plans. Dr. Chase explained. Diana was silent. She didn't know what to say or ask. She never thought she would be at a loss. Diana. The doctor addressed her again. Let's approach it this way. If you are genuinely committed to having a child, I will schedule the necessary tests for you. Your husband will also need to undergo an examination. He stared into her eyes intently, as if to ensure that Diana understood what she was getting into. Then he continued. Next, I propose a plan for our further actions. And if everything suits you, we can proceed. Are you agreeable? He asked. Yes, of course, I agree. Thank you, Dr. Chase. Diana thanked him. Not for anything yet, he said. After the consultation, Diana returned to work. She had to attend to her duties, but her mind was occupied with something entirely different. Emotions overwhelmed her, and various thoughts burdened her shoulders. She was scared to take such a step. Yet she desperately wanted to become a mother. The pre-Christmas hustle and bustle distracted Diana a little. She still kept the secret from Arthur. They decided to celebrate Christmas with their parents. In the end, a magnificent table with dishes was set. A tall and festive Christmas tree adorned the corner by the window. Arthur added the finishing touch when he hung the garland over everything. Candles were lit on the table. Finally, the family and close ones gathered around one table. Arthur opened the champagne and filled the glasses. The sound of clinking glasses and joyful laughter filled the air. Merry Christmas, exclaimed Diana and Arthur's parents. Then everyone began to try the festive dinner together, engaging in various conversations. After discussing various topics, they finally got to the subject of grandchildren. When will we have grandchildren? How long can you focus on your career? Diana, Mrs. Gosnell addressed Diana. Oh, Mrs. Gosnell, you're right. It's high time. Diana laughed. Arthur, his mother turned to her son. What's going on? How much longer do we have to wait? Is there any health issue? Ha, huh? she joked. Mom, Arthur replied. Everything is fine with our health. Both mine and Diana's. The test results came in, and everything is good. Right, Diana? He clarified, hugging her shoulders. Diana was taken aback and replied, Yes, everything is fine with us. And did your test results finally come in? He asked, looking into his wife's eyes. Yes, fortunately, they came in, and everything is in order. Diana lied. She felt uneasy about it but she was not obliged to discuss it even with her husband's parents. Well, shall we dance at least? Suggested Mrs. Blossom, Diana's mother. Diana and Arthur returned home. They had a wonderful time on this Christmas evening. She was glad to finally be alone with her husband. Diana approached him from behind and hugged him. It had been so long since she had been close to him. They hadn't been together for a long time. I missed you. Diana said, pressing against his back. Really? Arthur asked, but didn't turn around. He continued to stand with his back to his wife, lost in his thoughts. Yes, really? She replied and kissed him on the back. Then she walked around Arthur and turned to face him. The room was dimly lit. Diana looked into her husband's eyes. He was silent and didn't say anything. 
Diana started to worry that Arthur might indeed be troubled by the fact that she might never be able to give birth. Is something bothering you? She asked. No, everything's fine, my dear. He reassured her. She stood next to her husband for a while, as if waiting for something. However, a minute later, she moved away from Arthur and worked into the room. She undressed, sat on the bed. The girl lay in the darkness and looked towards the door, waiting for Arthur to enter, but he never showed up. Diana fell asleep, still waiting for his appearance. The next morning started with a late wake up. The clock showed exactly 11. Diana pulled her hands out from under the blanket and stretched, turning her head. She didn't find her husband next to her. For a moment, Diana was scared, but then, hearing noise in the kitchen, she smiled with relief. Hearing his wife's steps, he turned around. Good morning. He greeted her. He was cooking eggs. Good morning. Arthur, Diana approached him and kissed him on the cheek. You woke up early. Did you get enough sleep? She asked. Yes, I did. You know, yesterday I remembered that I left a contract at work. I wanted to take it to the client so that he could review it during the holidays. So, I decided to deal with it this morning. Explained Arthur, placing the eggs on the table. You are such a hard worker. What a responsible husband I have said Diana. Yeah, that's me. Okay, the tea is ready. So let's sit down. He said, yeah, just let me wash up first, said the wife and headed to the bathroom. Arthur forgot to warm up the car. Remembering this, he went for the keys, but in the usual place, he couldn't find them. Diana, where are the car keys? He shouted to his wife. Diana replied that she put them in her bag yesterday. I'm already wet. Wait a bit or find them yourself. She said. Diana regretted it deeply. Arthur headed to the room. Taking the bag, he decided to open a small pocket first. Putting his hand in, Arthur pulled out a folded document and nothing else. Setting it on the table, he moved on to another pocket. And that's where he found his keys. Arthur immediately pressed the button to warm up the car. Then he took the document and tried to put it back in place. While attempting to insert it back, his eyes caught an interesting sentence. It intrigued Arthur. Retrieving the document again, he unfolded it. And now he fully read what was written there. His face changed. He had just learned that due to a congenital feature of Diana, she would never be able to have children. Arthur closed the pocket but kept the document in his hands. When Diana finally came out of the shower, she saw Arthur in the kitchen. He held a sheet of paper in his hands. His face was sorrowful. In an instant, Diana understood what was happening, but she tried until the last moment to pretend as if nothing was going on. I accidentally found the latter. Here are the results of your tests. Arthur began. Why did you lie yesterday? He asked. I was going to tell you a bit later. There was no time yesterday, you know, she replied. She behaved absolutely calmly, although she felt intense fear inside. She was ready to accept any reaction from her husband. After all, he had the right to it. Sorry it happened, she added. What else could she say? After all, this diagnosis did not depend on her. It was God's will. Arthur remained silent, standing with the sheet in his hands. After a minute, he said, sorry, I need some time alone. Then he turned around and went into the room. He came out already dressed. Without saying a word, he left the house. Diana was left alone. For some time, she stared at the closed door and then shifted her gaze to the document that remained on the table. This is how your life can change completely in an instant, and no one can guarantee a happy future together. The woman sat there, motionless, allowing her overwhelming emotions to surface. An hour later, Diana called Arthur, but he didn't answer. She tried calling a second time, but with no response, she disconnected. Okay, Diana said aloud, I just need to let Arthur accept this, comprehend it. Everything will be fine. We just need to wait, 
Diana reassured herself. However, Arthur did not return, neither by lunch nor evening, and even at night, he was still not home. It was because early in the morning, Arthur had scheduled a meeting with his boss. Taking the gift he had prepared for his lover a week ago from the office, Arthur headed to her place. Lauren was waiting for his arrival. When she opened the door, Arthur was surprised by her appearance. She stood in a short nightgown and a long silk robe, unbuttoned, revealing the woman's charms. Arthur undressed and embraced Lauren. In those moments, he thought she could become the beloved wife and mother of his children. Holding her tightly, he led her into the living room. Lauren laughed. With strong hands, he gripped her wrists. Lauren looked at him teasingly. Arthur touched her lips, then again and again, until the growing passion made him kiss the woman's neck and chest. When everything subsided, Arthur lit a cigarette, and so did Lauren. Arthur gazed at the contours of her naked kid body. She was beautiful, delicate wrists, graceful curves, and light hair. Then Lauren turned to him, allowing him to admire her. What a bold girl. How daring she can be, thought Arthur. By the evening, Arthur gave Lauren the gift he had prepared. It was an evening dress. Lauren didn't like receiving clothes as gifts, but upon receiving the dress from Arthur, she smiled and thanked him for the attention. Arthur was pleased that Lauren liked the gift, but more importantly, he was glad that he believed Lauren was his true destiny. He thought that with her, he could build a strong family. As Lauren was a serious businesswoman, always maintaining order in the house, she understood Arthur perfectly, and together they were excellent partners. After dinner, they lay in bed, and Arthur said, I wanted to tell you that I'm willing to leave my wife for you. He assumed she would be happy to hear this. Why? She asked, because I love you. Arthur declared, I've never felt this good with anyone else. I would like to continue this journey through life with you. He added, for a few seconds, Lauren looked at him, then burst into laughter, making Arthur feel uneasy. He looked at her in surprise. Why are you laughing? He asked, sincerely not understanding her reaction. Are you so happy that you can't contain your laughter? He joked, hoping that was the case. Sorry, please, I'll calm down now, Lauren said. You just reminded me of some teenager. She glanced at Arthur's face, then stared at him thoughtfully. Are you saying all this seriously? She asked, getting out of bed. Well, of course, what's the joke? Arthur replied. Sitting on the bed, Lauren threw on a robe, looked at herself in the mirror, and then said, Well, I'm pleased and quite flattered to hear that. She turned and headed to the shower. When she returned, Arthur was already asleep. Lauren lit a cigarette, contemplating what Arthur had said. It was undoubtedly pleasant for her to hear that someone was willing to sacrifice a marriage for her. However, for Lauren, these romantic matters were not of great importance, as they were for Arthur. It merely amused her. She was curious to see if Arthur was genuinely ready to take such a serious step. Arthur returned home after lunch the next day. Diana was waiting for his arrival, thinking that she had hurt her husband with her actions. However, when Arthur crossed the threshold of the house, she realized that he had no intention of repairing their relationship. Finally, you're home exclaimed the wife. Hi, I won't stay long, replied Arthur, walking past Diana straight to the study. If you're hungry, I've prepared some food, she said. No, thanks. I'm not hungry. Arthur turned around and stopped. I came to gather my things. Diana froze in place. His words hit her like a blow. What do you mean? She asked a foolish question. I've already made up my mind. So, let's avoid tears and tantrums. You know yourself that without children, and without love, a family cannot exist. Arthur spoke coldly. We haven't even talked, Arthur. You've probably taken it all too close to heart. Nowadays, there are many ways to have children. It's not a problem anymore. She tried to stop him, to make him reconsider. But Arthur was unyielding. Diana, right now, you are the problem. 
he said such dreadful words, surprising himself with the cruelty toward the person he shared his life with just a month ago. But, as they say, all things must come to an end. I don't recognize you. Why are you doing this? She still asked, but Arthur wasn't listening. He was taking things out of the closet and putting them in a large bag. The oppressive pain in her chest expanded with each passing minute. Diana sat at the table, waiting for the wrestling in the room to cease and for the cause of her sorrow to leave her apartment. 20 minutes later, the door slammed shut and silence enveloped the house. Diana collapsed onto the bed and wept. She cried into the pillow, unsure of how to stop this endless flow of tears. Eventually, she managed to bring herself to a halt. Grabbing her phone, she called Megan and informed her of what had happened. Megan arrived quickly, seeing her friend in such a state. She never expected the situation to unfold like this. It can't be that a man would leave just because of the absence of children. It's nonsense. I don't believe it. There must be something else. Megan responded after listening to Diana's story. Megan brewed some tea and handed a cup to Diana. Drink tea. You need to hydrate right now, she said. Why? I'm not sick. Diana objected. Maybe not physically, but emotionally. Yes. So drink. Water cleanses in one way or another. Megan smiled. Do you think Arthur found another woman? Diana asked. Absolutely. Megan confidently replied. It usually drives women crazy thinking about children. While for men, it's much simpler. Megan winked. How do I get him back now? Diana asked. Silence followed. Or maybe he doesn't have anyone at all. Perhaps he's just stressed. She pondered, exploring different possibilities. Megan remained silent. I love him too much to just forget about him like that. Maybe I won't be able to be with anyone else anymore. Diana sighed heavily. Oh. Megan began. Here I am, living alone, and it's so good for me. No one frays my nerves. I don't have to overthink anything or anyone. She stretched. It's warm outside today. Let's go for a walk. She suddenly suggested. Well, yes, minus 15, very warm. Diana replied, at least you smiled. Megan noted, Megan, stay with me tonight. I'm afraid I need some company today. Diana said, well, of course I'll stay. I hope my Tom forgives me for that. She said, referring to her cat. The friends went outside as the evening began to settle. Have you already visited the doctor using my referral? Megan asked, yes, I did. But now it's all too late. Diana said, can a single woman give birth? For example, if I decide, could I make it happen? She asked, of course, nowadays, doctors have various ways to achieve that goal. Diana replied, well, that's great. I'll wander for a couple more years, and then I'll start taking action. She replied, Diana listened to Megan's words, spoken with such ease and nonchalance. She even decided that she should learn to approach her situation in the same way. Because if it's meant for two people to be together, it will happen. And if not, nothing good will come out of it anyway, is what Diana decided for herself. The decision brought her some relief. Megan, as promised, stayed overnight at Diana's house and then went home. Oh, Diana, I'd stay longer, but I'm afraid my Tom won't take me back. She laughed putting on her coat. And you, my dear, keep living, keep working, doing something, because life doesn't tend with a man, you know. Look around, see how much interesting stuff there is. Besides, you're into painting, so get into it even more. Come on, my dear, if anything, call me, day or night. Okay, Megan said. Diana thanked her friend for her care. They said their goodbyes. Diana took a deep breath. She tried to hold herself together and not think about the past. Returning to her room, she began sorting through her once-painted works. As she looked at them, she remembered herself, the one from before marriage. She recalled how cheerful, curious, and joyful she used to be. 
One of the paintings caught her attention. It resembled the one Diana had finished not long ago. It depicted a woman in a lotus pose sitting by a lake, where a blonde girl lay, surrounded by bright glowing threads forming a cocoon. The woman barely touched her with her hands, as if healing her from some ailment. Without thinking about anything else, Diana retrieved her easel, set up a canvas on it, and armed herself with a brush and paints. The blending of colors and the play with paints captivated her. She stopped noticing everything around her. She painted. Finally, closer to nightfall, Diana returned the brushes to their place, wiping her hands, smeared with paint. She still gazed at this woman. While drawing her image, she became so immersed in it that it seemed to her that it was her touching the woman with her hands and healing her energetic cocoon. The painting was complete. Days, weeks, months passed, and there was no call or message from her husband. Diana couldn't believe what had happened to her. She couldn't understand if she really deserved such treatment. Initially, it was very emotionally challenging for Diana. It was hard for her to come to terms with such a abrupt break. But even despite that, she continued to love Arthur. But now, a different life had begun. They say everything that happens to us occurs for a reason. Perhaps Diana needed to learn to live alone. To learn to let people go. To accept that life is unpredictable and can change in an instant. But you must keep loving life, regardless of what is happening around. Over time, Diana had to tell her parents that she and Arthur were no longer together. Mrs. Blossom was concerned about her daughter. Sweetheart, my dear, she said. They were sitting at the kitchen table, sipping tea. Life is a tangled thing. Sometimes something new comes to you. You encounter something unknown, and you need to understand it. Learn a lesson. But it all gets complicated when two people, who have intertwined their destinies, are connected by a thread for a lifetime. Then changes in one person inevitably affect the other. Concluded Mrs. Blossom. You sound like a philosopher. Mom, Diana said, smiling. She was grateful to her mother for her support. It's true, her mother said thoughtfully. You have to keep living and wait for this challenging period to end. There's no other way, she added. Yes, Mom, you're right, Diana agreed. We have to keep living, do what we can, and find joy in this new stage. The young woman smiled, returning home. Diana once again reviewed her life. She thought about her husband. Since she couldn't forget him, so be it. She wouldn't waste energy trying to erase him from her memory. New relationships wouldn't help because Diana didn't have such a goal in mind. Standing in the middle of the room, she pondered. What can I do now? Then she continued speaking aloud. Now, I can seriously focus on my paintings and continue working at the university. Maybe I'll enroll in some dance or yoga classes to keep myself occupied. The young woman took another deep breath. It's been almost six months since Diana has been living alone. During this time, she managed to finish one painting and sketch out an idea for another. That was all she needed. Diana entered the room, deciding to rearrange things. She moved her bed to another room and set up a workshop in the vacated space. It turned out to be much more convenient. Diana enjoyed the rearrangement so much that she took out a canvas, set it up on the easel, and began sketching with a pencil on a clean sheet. She didn't know what she would draw. She just felt like drawing lines. She liked the sound the pencil made as it brushed against the paper. Gradually, an image began to take shape. The pencil and canvas transported Diana to another reality, a reality where there is only a desire to live, create, and be in a state of fulfillment. Diana finished drying when the clock hands pointed to midnight. Putting down the brush, she didn't even bother to see what she had created. She was so tired that she only had enough energy to wash up and go to bed. In an instant, she fell asleep. The morning began with the alarm clock and preparations for work. Diana hurried to her classes. This June day offered plenty of sunshine, a clear blue sky, and the singing of birds. Diana was in an unusually good mood. Her mind was filled with many plans, numerous ideas, 
And most importantly, a dream firmly rooted inside her. She knew that it would come true. The classes went by quickly and easily. Today, after lunch, Megan suddenly called her. She wanted to meet urgently. Diana, hi, you have to agree to meet with me. I need to tell you something. Megan's voice carried notes of something she couldn't contain. Whoa, calm down. Diana reassured her. Let's meet at your place when your classes are over. They've just finished. Diana managed to say. Megan immediately gave the address of a nearby cafe and hung up. The cafe turned out to be just around the corner. There, Diana found a table, and soon Megan arrived. Megan, Diana spoke. Your look scares me. If you're very hungry, eat, and I'll tell you, Megan said. It turned out that 35-year-old Megan had already firmly decided to have a child on her own and raise it independently. She had undergone all the necessary tests and scheduled a date for the reproductive specialist to perform the required procedure. As soon as they discussed the operation date with the doctor, the very next day, Megan met a guy. According to her story, he was like a god handsome, tall, physically fit, with no bad habits, and holding a prestigious position. But the most incredible part comes next. Megan continued. It turned out that an incredible passion flared up between Megan and her boyfriend. Everything was so beautiful and magical that even Megan herself didn't understand how it happened. What did happen was that Megan came to the doctor on the appointed date for the procedure. The doctor examined her and then said, Um, I'm sorry, but I clearly and distinctly see that there's already a fertilized egg inside you. The doctor continued to gaze at Megan, who, not taking her eyes off him, fluttered her eyelashes. Afterwards, she flew out of the hospital, ecstatic. She immediately called her boyfriend and shared the joyful news. And how did he take it? Diana asked, we're getting married in a month. Megan replied, squealing with joy. That's amazing. Fantastic, Megan. Diana rejoiced with her. So, you're going to be a mom? Yep. Megan nodded. Megan and Diana chatted for a long time in the cafe, discussing the topic. Afterward, Megan's future husband arrived, and Diana took a taxi home. Megan's story impressed Diana. She began to think about it, fantasize, and imagine things until a new painting took shape in her mind. Another week passed. The thought that she also had the opportunity to have a child through non-traditional means didn't leave Diana's mind. After much contemplation, she called Dr. Chase again and scheduled an appointment. Oh, Diana, hello, you've been gone for a while. You suddenly disappeared, the doctor said. Yes, I apologize for my disappearance. Things have changed a bit, Diana replied, starting to tell her story. Diana tried to be honest. She decided not to hide anything but to share everything. Dr. Chase listened attentively. Hum, hum. He nodded. After listening to Diana, he expressed his opinion on the matter. I understand you, Diana. I understand, he repeated. The thing is, we can try to achieve our goal. But, Diana, have you thought about what will happen if the child's father finds out about everything? Won't it be another trauma for him and a new painful separation for you? That's also crucial. I realize all the risks, and yet, I am determined to do this. Diana said, I understand. The doctor replied, then, tomorrow at 8 a.m., I expect you in this office. He handed her a sheet of paper with the room number and the arrival time. We'll start with all the necessary tests, and then move on to the most important part, the freezing of the eggs. With that, the doctor concluded the conversation with the patient and let her go home. Thank you. Diana replied and walked out into the corridor. She paused by the door, as if coming to her senses after the conversation. And it was true not every woman would dare to take such a step. However, Diana was determined and ready to act. The next morning, Diana woke up at six. She washed and dressed leisurely. There was a slight excitement inside her but it didn't hinder her from feeling good. Locking her apartment, she got into a taxi and headed to the specified address. 
A smiling receptionist greeted her at the hospital. She processed the necessary documents and immediately escorted Diana to the office. Several tests were conducted here. Then another nurse took Diana to another room, where her entire body was examined. After all this, Diana was allowed to go home and await the results. The subsequent weeks were spent undergoing other crucial tests. Exactly one month later, Diana was scheduled for the stimulation of so-called superovulation. This is a process where instead of one egg, which can be fertilized, 10 to 15 eggs mature in a woman. The procedure was successful. Thanks to it, a small number of eggs were obtained. Following the plan, they were preserved and awaited the right moment. Diana was at home, contemplating whether it was worth taking this step. She weighed all the pros and cons. In the end, she could stop at any moment. With the stimulation, only three healthy eggs were obtained. Now the decision was left to choose who would be the father of the child. But for Diana, there was no need to think. Apart from Arthur, she couldn't see anyone else in that role. He was perfect for her. He was the best for her. Despite what happened between them, Diana didn't lose hope that one day her apartment door would swing open and he would be standing on the threshold. Oh, God, it's going to be the best day of her life. But for now, she has to keep living her life and patiently wait. The phone rang and it was Megan. Where have you disappeared to? She asked, hello, my dear, did you forget? I'm getting married in a week. Megan exclaimed, hello, Megan. I didn't forget. I called you a week ago, but you were out of reach. Diana replied, yeah, Kit and I went on a little vacation to give our little one positive emotions and hormones. Megan explained, Diana listened to a brief story about their trip and Kit's love for her. I'm really happy for you. Diana replied, oh, by the way, I accidentally showed one of your paintings to Kit. You know, he got seriously interested. Megan said, what do you mean? Diana didn't understand directly, but let's discuss it later. Because right now, I need to know, did you buy yourself a red dress? She asked, bridesmaids will be in red as a symbol of love and passion. Megan explained, immersed in wedding preparations. I'm going to buy it tomorrow. Diana reassured her. Megan's wedding turned out to be an intriguing event. There were games and contests. One of the groom's friends flirted with Diana, but she didn't take his attention seriously. Megan was simply stunning. A side of her that Diana had never seen before. Oh, there you are. The mysterious artist whose paintings my beloved wife showed me, said a man in a blue jacket. It was Megan's husband. He held a drink in his hands, and next to him stood a happy Megan, proudly linked with his arm. Oh, hello. Diana stammered. Well, I'm not exactly an artist, but... Diana began to justify herself, but Megan cut in. Diana has recently allowed her talent to come out, and... Oh, I'm afraid to imagine what she can achieve if she fully dedicates herself to it. Megan said with such a convincing voice that even Diana believed her words. Megan smiled, squinting her eyes. It seemed like she had something in mind. I would like to see your work in person. Kit said to Diana. Oh, Diana stammered again. She hadn't considered selling her paintings. She wasn't ready for that. The day after tomorrow, we'll have a small party at our place. And that's when Diana can show us her creation. Megan suggested. Diana looked at her with a puzzled expression. Megan approached Huria and whispered, consider the money in your pocket. She laughed, and then she and her husband joined the other guests. Bewildered, Diana remained standing in place. She returned home late in the evening and went straight to bed. Waking up early in the morning, she was delighted that today was a day off. It was still summer outside, and it was beautiful. The girl took a shower, had breakfast, and then headed to the studio. Something was bothering her. Diana wanted to hold a brush, wanted to make strokes. The idea came on its own. At that moment, she wasn't thinking about anything. Everything was happening spontaneously. 
as if Diana had indeed entered an invisible stream that carried her forward. A call interrupted her work. It was Megan again. She asked if Diana had forgotten that they were expecting her with a painting tomorrow. Diana imagined how funny it would look. But Megan was serious about it. So Diana decided to go along with the plan. The next day, Diana left the house. She was dressed in a red dress. In her hands, Diana carried a framed painting. She opened the taxi door and got into the back seat. Arriving at the address, Megan greeted her at the doorstep of a large luxurious house. She was very happy to see her. You did it after all. Come in, my dear, she exclaimed. Diana entered the house. It seemed empty at first. Everyone was at the table, explained Megan, noticing her friend's embarrassed look. Then they proceeded to the living room. In the living room, Diana encountered a large table with various people she was seeing for the first time. Megan introduced her as her friend and then seated her in an available spot. Diana, glad to see you, Kit said. Did you bring what we agreed upon? He asked, yes. The painting is waiting for you in the corridor, replied the girl. She was worried whether he would like the painting or maybe it wouldn't meet his expectations. I understand you might be hungry, but I can't wait to see it with my own eyes. Shall we go take a look? He got straight to the point. Diana felt her pulse quicken. Why not? She said. Kit, Megan, and Diana headed to the corridor. Diana carefully enwrapped the painting and then placed it. Stepping aside, silence hung in the air. Kit and Megan froze, examining the image on the canvas. They didn't say anything, but from their gaze, it was clear that something had captivated them. This is incredible exclaimed Kit. Did you really paint this? He asked, realizing how strange the question sounded. Well, of course, here's my signature. Diana said, I told you she's talented. Megan exclaimed, it's like it's alive. It seems to be looking at me, watching me. Kit joked and asked, how much do you want for it? This question stunned Diana. She hesitated with the answer. But Megan came to her aid in time. 4,000, she said, looking into her husband's eyes. Diana opened her mouth in surprise. She wanted to object, saying it was too much. But her friend came very close and pinched her side. Diana jumped. Ah, she let out a silly laugh. Good price. I think, for such work. She blurted out. She felt awkward in this situation but she decided to fully trust Megan. Yes, an excellent price. Kit said, nodding. He continued to look at the painting and then approached his wife, embracing her. In a few minutes, a substantial amount was credited to Diana's account. All three returned to the table, continuing the feast until another guest noticed Diana's painting. He began examining it, offering praises. His words of admiration attracted other guests, and for the first time, Diana found herself under such significant attention. After this dinner, she seriously decided to immerse herself in painting. Her long-standing dream of opening her own exhibition started to seem achievable. She contemplated, I have a stable job, I'm on my own, and no one needs my attention. I'll gradually paint, create a collection, and after a year, think about opening an exhibition. September 2 arrived, the scheduled day for the Diana's Paintings exhibition. A considerable amount of work went into organizing the event. First and foremost, the paintings needed to be arranged correctly to allow visitors to smoothly enter the atmosphere envisioned by the artist. Diana wanted to immerse the viewer in the magic surrounding the beginning and end of life, as well as childbirth and motherhood. As for the artist's attire, Diana didn't have to think too long. She chose a long golden dress with a deep slit, complemented by earrings and a necklace. When Megan saw her, she was in complete awe. You look like a heavenly nymph. I might cry, she said. The little girl who had slept in Diana's arms also smiled, as if understanding through sleep what they were talking about. You are still under the influence of hormones, Diana replied. Come on. Where's our lovely little one? She added, 
peeking at the sleeping baby. I can't believe you've become a mom. Diana said, it's nothing. And soon you, Diana, will join our ranks. Megan replied, the women worked into the hall. It was time to open the doors for the guests. Diana wanted to go and do it, but Kit beat her to it. For the first half hour, there was no one except for the three of them. Diana was a bit anxious, wondering if anything worthwhile would come out of this. Suddenly, the door creaked, and the first visitor appeared at the art exhibition. Diana's face brightened, tension disappeared, and more people followed. They entered, looked around, approached the paintings, discussed something, whispered, and conversed. Diana observed them with interest and watched their reactions. It was evident that the artist's concept appealed to the majority of the visitors. See, it's all happening, Megan said. Yes, it's amazing, Diana replied. Thanks for giving me that push back then. She thanked her friend. Well, look at the lady who just arrived. Megan whispered, gesturing towards a woman in a white pantsuit. Diana's face seemed familiar, and Arthur entered after her. Diana's expression changed instantly. She never expected to see her husband here. Is that Arthur? Megan whispered, widening her eyes at her friend. Yes, and it looks like with his lover. Arthur's wife said. What did he see in her? She looks like a female bulldog. Megan remarked, what? Diana barely held back her laughter. Diana turned her back to them. She didn't want to make eye contact with him. Why are you hiding? It's silly. Arthur knows it's your exhibition. Megan muttered, he knows nothing. Diana whispered, I'm using a pseudonym here. Yeah, right. Divine doesn't sound anything like your name, Megan replied. They've moved to another hall. She added, Diana turned around. Indeed, the hall was now filled with other people. Oh, it's time for me to feed the baby, Megan said, rocking the infant. Diana remained alone in her place. After spotting them, she seemed to lose self-control instantly, replaced by uncertainty, nervousness, and anxiety trying her best to stay positive and act as if nothing happened. Diana attempted to distract herself by examining one of her paintings. The canvas depicted the face of a goddess emanating tranquility and silence, with eyes full of kindness and love for the world. Interesting. Whose face did the author use as the basis? A male voice from the left was heard. Diana recognized him immediately. She stood still, afraid to turn. Have you ever thought about it? He asked again. Her temples pulsed, and her palms became sweaty. Maybe it's pure fantasy, she replied, keeping her gaze fixed on the painting. Maybe, Arthur replied, suddenly recalling conversations with his wife about what she wanted to portray on canvas. He slowly turned his head towards the artist. Diana also slowly met her husband's gaze. For a couple of seconds, he just looked at the girl, whose image appeared to him as something beautiful. Diana, he said softly, hearing her name from him. Diana flared up. Hi, she replied, redirecting her gaze back to the painting. You've changed so much, Arthur said again. After a while, he shifted his gaze to the painting and asked, So, is this your exhibition? His voice sounded uncertain. Yes, mine, Diana replied briefly. Of course, she wanted to rush and hug him, tell him everything, and then ask about him. But she understood that an insurmountable gap still existed between them. Oh, there you are. A female voice behind them said. Lauren approached Arthur, hugging him by the hand, and started examining the painting. Tired of waiting for me, she asked with a wide, bright smile. Then her expression turned into displeasure. I'm tired of walking too. Let's go from here. I'll take a brochure, and I need to make a call. Oh, I'm so tired. She complained. Arthur pretended as if there had been no conversation between him and Diana. He worked out with his lover, and Diana sighed with relief. In that terrible moment, she experienced a range of emotions. Anger, hurt, disappointment, 
and self-pity. Yet, she managed to push it all out of her mind. One thing remained unchanged, her love for Arthur. Finally, the evening came to an end, and the next day, everything repeated. Yes, the weekend was interesting. Unexpectedly for Diana, calls started coming in, offering to buy her paintings. The girl was shocked. Now it seemed that luck had turned to her so easily. Having fulfilled her dream of hosting an exhibition of her own paintings, Diana continued to contemplate her future, how to fill the emptiness in her heart. Still, she felt drawn to Arthur. Unable to resist, she dialed his number. Upon doing so, she only heard the automated response that the subscriber was out of the network coverage area. One day, Diana invited acquaintances from her workplace to her birthday. The invitation was unexpected for Diana, but she was happy to attend the party, distract herself, and socialize. Upon arriving, she immediately sensed the lively atmosphere. Music played in the apartment, and there were many guests. Gabriel, the hostess, greeted Diana with hugs. The whole company welcomed her, and as Diana sat on a chair and looked up, she locked eyes with Arthur. He gave her a friendly smile, and the girl never expected to meet him here. Initially, she even thought that Gabriel had orchestrated it intentionally. However, she later learned that Gabriel's husband was a friend of Arthur. The guests were enjoying themselves, drinking, and having a good time. Diana tried not to pay attention to her husband, who was behaving strangely toward her. He didn't ignore her, but he also didn't make any moves. After scanning everyone present once again, she realized that his girlfriend was not here, which made her feel more at ease. As the night approached, the atmosphere heated up to the point where it seemed like oxygen had completely disappeared. Diana stepped out onto the balcony, and a strong wind brought freshness with it. She regretted going out without a jacket, but she didn't want to go back, feeling cold. A familiar male voice asked, startling Diana. In the semi-darkness, she hadn't noticed that someone else was there. It's getting quite chilly, she replied. There was a pause. Arthur let go of the door, and the window closed. Diana didn't know what she could say to Arthur, and honestly, she didn't feel like saying anything. You. Arthur began. How are you? He asked. Those few words stirred up emotions in Diana. Fine, she replied. But inside, everything was torn apart. You've changed. It seems our separation has been good for you, he said jokingly. Yeah, you know, I've become more open to the world. Stop fixating on one person. It's pretty cool. A useful skill, Diana said being completely sincere. Then Diana decided to rejoin the party. Arthur remained alone. He reminisced about his past life, the life with Diana, perhaps regretting his departure. No one knew about it. After spending some time alone with Diana, he couldn't return to his normal state. It was unusual to realize that he wasn't as crucial to her as before. He immediately wanted to know how she was living, what she was doing, Maybe she had a new boyfriend, but he comforted himself with the fact that he was still officially her husband. As the birthday was coming to an end, Diana was getting ready to go home. She ordered a taxi and waited for its arrival. But suddenly, Arthur wanted to give the girl a ride home. What's this? A cruel joke or fate? Diana asked herself. Of course, she could have refused, but instead, she replied, if it's not too much trouble. As she said that, she felt a tremor throughout her body. She was expecting a change. And now, it seemed like her life was changing. Arthur and Diana got into the car. The girl felt exactly the same as a couple of years ago. Arthur started the car and pulled away slowly at first, then gaining speed. She sat in silence. She didn't know how to start a conversation. Various thoughts were swirling in her head. Like, how have you been? Do you miss us? But in reality, there was still silence until Arthur pressed a button, and romantic music started playing. Thanks to this song, the tension in the car didn't feel as strong. Arthur remained silent too. Diana glanced at him. He was just looking ahead. 
keeping an eye on the road. His face revealed nothing. Perhaps he had indeed decided to give her a ride. Finally, the car arrived at the right address. Diana took her bag and prepared to leave. I'll walk you in. Unexpectedly said Arthur. Oh, okay. Diana said with a smile, surprised by such an offer. The two of them climbed the stairs, with Diana leading the way. When they reached her door, she, waiting for him to climb up, opened the door with her key and stopped at the entrance. Arthur worked up the staircase straight to her. Diana initially looked at his feet, then raised her gaze to his face. They looked at each other with a certain look, as if both wanted to read the secret that was hidden within each other. Approaching Diana, Arthur stopped half a meter away from her, still not taking his eyes off her. Do you have a glass of water for me? He asked. Diana replied that she did. A sudden thought suddenly settled in her mind. Everything happening between them now was on an invisible level. They spoke little, but both knew exactly what they needed. They entered the apartment. The hallway was lit with subdued light. Come in, Diana offered, and then headed to the kitchen. Arthur noticed that there had been a change in the house. Furniture rearranged, and new interesting things appeared. Diana handed Arthur a glass. She greedily examined his face, his cheekbones, his chin, his neck. She would have liked to divert such an improper gaze, but she couldn't control herself. Something deeper than reason and intellect was now guiding her. Arthur placed the glass on the table and then stared at Diana. They were supposed to start talking, and thousands of words were supposed to flow from their mouths, but all of that now seemed absolutely unnecessary. Without breaking eye contact, Arthur approached closely, and then his hands wrapped around Diana's neck, and their lips met. The two beings completely shut down their minds, surrendering to a torrent of sensuality and passion. Arthur kissed Diana, and Diana kissed Arthur, head spinning, and hands burning with heat, filling their bodies with hot energy, from which new life emerges. Strange is the phenomenon love, after all that happened between Diana and Ava, one might think that these two should start their meeting by clarifying their relationship. But instead, they pounced on each other. When it was all over, Diana went to the bathroom and took out a jar for analysis from the cabinet, where she placed the most valuable thing that could help fulfill her main mission. Something that, as it seemed to her, would definitely help restore her former life. Then Diana met with the courier and handed over the valuable package, and then went back to bed. Arthur was fast asleep. He slept as soundly as he did two years ago. Diana instantly transported herself to the past, where she and her husband were tender to each other, where they had hopes, plans for a shared future, and quiet love. Diana lay on her side, looking at Arthur's back, who also slept on his side. A warm, salty tear rolled down her cheek. The morning of the new day began as usual, except that today Diana was preparing breakfast for two. The girl, in high spirits, set the plates for scrambled eggs. She was confident that their relationship had taken a new turn, and she eagerly awaited Arthur to wake up and come to the kitchen. She didn't have to wait long. Arthur approached just as Diana was arranging breakfast on the plates. He glanced at Diana, and then at the table, his face lit up with a smile. After all, it's always nice when someone cooks for you. Did you sleep well? Diana asked. After the passionate night, there was still a slight tension between them. Yes, thank you. I slept like a baby today. Arthur replied sincerely. He smiled. He wanted to appear friendly and sweet, but some stiffness betrayed his awkwardness or maybe even regret about what happened. I made scrambled eggs just the way you like, Diana said. She tried to lighten the atmosphere, as if there had been no breakup. But Arthur didn't think so. He sat down at the table and ate. There was also silence between them. They exchanged bits of phrases to break the silence, but something prevented them from communicating with each other as before, and it seemed that Arthur felt it more. Yes, he probably felt guilty for leaving Diana. Diana, can I ask you something? Arthur began. Yes, 
Of course, Diana replied, let's leave everything as it is. And what happened between us tonight? Arthur chose his words carefully. But you understand that we just both surrendered to the impulsive feelings. He concluded, as Arthur spoke, he occasionally glanced at Diana to understand how his words affected her. Diana remained silent. If she were alone, her face would have already twisted in horror at such words. But now, with Arthur in front of her, behaving very coldly, she tried to keep her composure and remain calm. Why are you saying this? She asked, looking into his eyes. Because it will be better for all of us. Arthur replied. He could see how he was causing her pain again. How he was upsetting her. But he was convinced that this was genuinely for the best. Standing up from the table, he began to bid farewell to Diana. But then the girl couldn't take it anymore. Go away. She said, leave immediately. I don't want to see you ever again. She spoke only now, realizing her big mistake. Arthur left. Diana remained in the kitchen. She was filled with anger and hatred. She was once again overwhelmed with hurt and humiliation. Memories of that night flashed before her eyes. Exactly two weeks later, Diana received a call from the clinic. The girl had completely forgotten that she had managed to gather everything for the realization of her cherished goal. The clinic administrator's voice invited her to come at a specific time. Diana was on her way anticipating that the doctor would deliver joyful news. Entering his office, she radiated happiness. Dr. Chase, hello. She greeted him. Did it work? She asked in a hopeful voice. Diana, please, have a seat. The doctor said in a calm tone. I must inform you right away that the first attempt was unsuccessful. It's normal. He immediately reassured her. And I want to remind you once again that it might not work at all. That's also normal. Diana, he addressed her to ensure that she was adequately processing the information. Yes, Dr. Chase. I understand everything. Yes, Diana nodded. We have two more attempts left. Of course, the risk of it not working is significant. But we have all the materials. So you just need to believe. Believe. The doctor repeated. Raising his hands, you'll receive the results in an email notification, or you can call the number. He handed her a business card with the clinic's number that concluded their conversation. Diana went to work, trying not to dwell on the failure. Diana continued working and painting. She wanted to create something of her own. She tried to push Arthur out of her mind and contemplated filing for divorce. Time passed. Diana continued to live, healing her wounded soul. She eagerly awaited joyful news from the clinic. Unfortunately, the second attempt was also unsuccessful. Diana began to come to terms with the idea that she might never become a mother. Ultimately, Diana decided to leave it to the will of God. Let the higher powers deal with this issue. I surrender, she said to herself. Almost another year passed. One summer day, she ran into Megan again. Megan wasn't alone. Her two-year-old daughter, Daisy, awkwardly worked alongside her. Daisy, you don't eat these flowers. You admire and smell them. Like this. Megan said, demonstrating the proper way. The little one looked curiously at her mom, while Diana admired them both. The friends walked along a path in the park on a summer day. They talked about recent events shared stories about work, and discussed personal lives. Has Arthur shown up? Megan inquired. No, Diana replied. You are not still waiting for him. Are you? Megan asked again. No, I'm not waiting. Diana replied curtly. It was evident that Megan noticed she was lying. I think it's the opposite. You haven't met anyone else. You remain devoted to him. Megan observed, and she was right. Diana continued to love Arthur and hoped that things could be repaired in their relationship. The thought of divorce horrified her. What about children? Her friend asked. You're trying to have a baby. She added, oh, Megan, it's all very, very complicated. For some reason, God isn't granting me children easily. Diana replied, you know, 
her friend began. Have you considered turning to the deities? What deities? Diana asked with a smile. Well, you draw goddesses, spirits, protectors of mothers. Megan said, as if nudging her toward the right mindset. Well, I draw, but it's all from my imagination. Just fantasy. Diana replied, listen, I would use all means available if I were you. Megan insisted. They say there's a fertility goddess. Megan added. Diana pondered. This summer, she and her university colleagues were planning a small tour to bond and get to know each other better. The next day, Diana pitched this idea at a meeting, and many supported the teacher. Diana began preparations. She wasn't particularly counting on divine intervention, but she thought that even if nothing came of it, she would at least be inspired by the beauty of nature, explore her country, and simply change her surroundings. So, on the morning flight, a group of six embarked on a short journey. First, the group arrived in the town of Lake Riverside. There was a brief stroll, lunch at a cozy restaurant, and check-in at a hotel. The next morning, everyone set out by bus to the village of Cahuilla. Here, the traditional way of life still persisted. The spiritual foundations and customs were still cherished. Picturesque mountains surrounded this small village. The locals believed that in this place, the divine realm met the world of ordinary people. And it was here that a temple was once built. A kilometer from the temple stood a large boulder with an uncoved image of the goddess Megan had mentioned. Upon reaching this place, Diana felt a tingling sensation throughout her body. It turned out that she was alone at this moment. Diana was most surprised to find a small nest next to the stone, resembling a baby cradle. Peering inside, she saw several toys there. Diana remembered what she had brought with her and reached into her backpack. It was a childhood doll of Diana. After patting its head, Diana placed the doll in the cradle. In the pocket of her dress, there was a note asking for blessings for Diana to have children. She looked at the doll and the little puppet it held in one hand for a while before getting up and returning to the others. The guide was just talking about the goddess, who patronizes mothers, children, and everyone engaged in creativity, seeking wisdom. As evening fell, it was time to return to make it back in time. Diana returned home on the seventh day. Tired, she unpacked her bags and laid out her things. Her parents were waiting for her at home that evening. At the bottom of the suitcase, Diana pulled out an album where she made sketches of the places she visited or things that came to her in dreams. The vacation turned out to be interesting and fruitful. Her phone rang and Diana answered. Hello, Diana. A female voice came through. This is the clinic calling. Please come tomorrow at 8 in the morning. You have a positive result. The voice continued. Diana silently continued to listen. She couldn't believe her ears the first time. What? Excuse me. What result? She wanted to clarify. Dr. Chase will explain everything to you. Come tomorrow at 8 in the morning. The girl repeated. Diana's eyes widened. She took deep breaths. The next morning, Diana took a taxi to the clinic. Diana. Dr. Chase began. Fate has smiled upon you, bringing you closer to your dream. But you understand that this is just one of them. Right, Diana? He asked, making her understand not to get too excited. As the main work is still ahead. Yes, yes, Dr. Chase. I understand, Diana replied. One more thing. You have to be ready for this. He paused for a moment. What is it, Doctor? Diana asked, you're having twins, he said. I mean, how? She asked a silly question. Yes, Diana, it happens. The doctor shrugged. Diana still didn't say anything. Today you'll take tests. Here's the list. He handed her a sheet, and I'll be waiting for you here at the same time tomorrow. The day X arrived. The operation was successful. Now Diana was pregnant with still tiny little ones, and time continued its course. Life moved forward. Diana's pregnancy progressed well, without complications. Diana's parents, 
upon learning that she had chosen an unconventional way to have children, took it all in stride. As for Arthur, Diana decided to postpone the divorce. She didn't want to subject herself or the little ones to unnecessary stress, so she didn't say anything to her husband, and he showed no signs of involvement after their last meeting. The time was approaching for the birth. Her belly was already big. During this time, Diana's mother often visited. Diana stocked up on books on newborn car, bought things necessary for the babies and their moms. And then the day came when two little ones came into the world. Tears of joy ran down Diana's face. Tired, she held her two sons close. Diana kissed them and couldn't be happier. With the arrival of the children, Diana's life changed completely. She underwent a radical transformation. Her work at the university was temporarily put on hold and her paintings had to be set aside. Now she needed strength to feed the babies, get enough sleep, and take care of the children. Diana recovered and slowly started to find her way. The children were obedient and not demanding. Six months later, Diana was able to return to work. She taught painting classes for an hour, twice a week, and for now, that was enough for her. Her colleagues admired her and Diana thanked the universe for having such a wonderful team. She recalled her friend's words. The world cannot revolve around one person. Look around, see. Diana smiled. Megan was right. Now, after going through this journey, Diana was rewarded with children and an understanding that life must be accepted just as it is. There is life, and it is what it is. You just need to find something you can love and that will fulfill you. With Mrs. Blossom's help, Diana could dedicate time to painting. New ideas and plans kept her restless. She wanted to move forward, to act. However, when the babies turned seven months old, Diana suddenly organized another exhibition. This time she understood better how to go about it. The theme of the exhibition this time revolved around the inner strength of a person and their relationship with the world. The paintings were filled with a lot of sunlight, golden shades, and, of course, spirits that, according to Diana's belief, lived before us, lived with us, and would live after us. Diana interacted with exhibition visitors with great respect and love. Somehow, now that she had given birth, she felt more confident. Watching the couple in front of one of her paintings, she noticed a man behind them, after a few seconds of careful observation, she recognized Arthur. He was looking at her, but for some reason, he hesitated to approach. Fortunately, Diana was a different person now. She no longer felt the same excitement and vulnerability. Turning away, she focused on her work. A minute later, her mother approached and whispered something in her ear. Arthur saw Diana, dressed in a beautiful blue dress, disappearing into the corridor. Why did he come here? For what purpose? To admire the paintings? Well, let's assume. But why then is he looking not at the paintings but at her? What does he want? Did he realize everything and come to apologize? In reality, the passionate romance between Arthur and Lauren, which had developed so rapidly, had quietly started to fall apart after crossing a certain threshold. Yes, Initially, Lauren and Arthur formed a successful couple, excelling in the advertising business. However, Lauren could not and did not intend to yield to Arthur, who was building his plans around her. As it turned out, these two individuals were very different. They shared a common goal in business, but in life, they had entirely different aspirations and perspectives. Arthur, driven by passion and recklessness, believed that Lauren was the woman who would make him happy, and to some extent, that was true. Lauren truly gave Arthur love and brought meaning to his life, but over time, Arthur became dull to her. This was because Lauren had no intention of building a family with Arthur. She chose him simply because he stood out among her other employees. He was intelligent, resourceful, and full of energy qualities that appealed to Lauren and sparked a desire to possess him. Lauren was a hunter of handsome men, and Arthur became one for her. However, 
Once everything became clear with him, she realized the need to move on. Moreover, she began demanding much more commitment from Arthur in their business. But Arthur failed one important meeting, then another. This infuriated Lauren, and over time, their relationship began to deteriorate. One day, Lauren was explaining to a potential client in which cities she proposed installing banners with advertising billboards. The man turned out to be a local deputy planning his advertising campaign for the upcoming elections. Lauren stood by a large wall map, placing flags with her hand and explaining why she considered it best to install the billboard in a particular location. The deputy listened attentively and watched her hand. However, at some point, he couldn't resist his attraction and, taking Lauren's hand, started kissing her fingers, palm, and wrists. Lauren watched him and what he was doing, unable to stop at all. Yes, she enjoyed it and found pleasure in it. Her gaze and smile only confirmed her favor for such things. At that very moment, Arthur entered the office. He didn't immediately understand what was happening but managed to notice that some man was kissing his woman's hand. Moreover, no one hurried to stop it. Lauren gracefully retrieved her hand, and the deputy, bidding farewell, immediately left the office without acknowledging Arthur. What was that? Arthur asked seriously. What's with the tone? His boss immediately retorted. Did I make a mistake? Did that guy kiss your hand? Right. He asked, restraining his indignation. Stop the hysteria. Firstly, he's not just a guy, but a very important person in the city. And secondly, I'm not your property. She approached the desk and started going through papers. Oh, by the way, where's the report I asked you to do? She looked at Arthur with such a cold gaze that he felt like a little boy who hadn't done his homework. Arthur remembered that he hadn't finished it yet. He returned to his office and started working on the report. But the next moment was even more humiliating. After Arthur moved into Lauren's apartment, he also had keys to her place. Returning once from a business trip earlier than expected, he opened the door, as usual, placed the keys, and music was playing in the apartment. Climbing to the second floor, Arthur saw what made him turn a blind eye. He watched as the two swayed slowly in the dance. She stood, turned away from him, and that scoundrel was kissing her neck. His hands were sliding along her hips. They didn't see him. They were facing away, and the room was dimly lit. Arthur recognized him. It was the deputy, the same one. Arthur saw that they were having a great time together, while he was torn to pieces by anger and jealousy. With a shout of get out of here, he lunged at the deputy, but the latter managed to dodge and react, delivering the first blow to Arthur's stomach. What are you doing? Lauren's voice rang out. Don't touch him. She addressed the deputy. He's my woman. Arthur said and again rushed at the deputy, but unsuccessfully. He dodged. All right, enough. Lauren shouted. I won't allow fights in my apartment. I'm calling the police if you don't leave right now. She said angrily. Looking at Arthur, Arthur had never experienced such humiliation before. Only now did he realize what he meant to her. Spitting aside, he left her apartment. Then began a whole year of wandering. Arthur could have returned to his parents' house, but he didn't want unnecessary conversations. Arthur chose the hard way, a path he had to start from scratch. Settling into a room he rented from an old lady, he tried to find a job but for some inexplicable reason, he was rejected everywhere. Arthur didn't know what to do. After working as a security guard at a local hotel for a while, he stayed there to work. He simply worked and earned money, in a way. This punishment allowed Arthur to reflect and understand many things. To understand that he had treated his wife terribly, and she had to endure the same terrible pain as he did. Time passed, and Arthur worked, setting aside some savings. Plans were forming in his mind, and eventually, he took a risk and opened his small advertising agency. With excellent interpersonal skills, he quickly found his first clients, and gradually, his business began to grow. 
Despite this, in the beginning, Arthur had to limit himself and work a lot. One day, he had the idea to expand his business, but it required a certain amount of capital. Arthur thought long and hard about how to obtain it. Nothing seemed better to him than selling his house plot and putting that money into circulation. However, to do this, he needed to meet with Diana. She was his wife, and she also had a right to the house and land. Therefore, he decided to negotiate with her and, through mutual agreement, get his share. Arthur didn't call Diana in advance. He thought she hadn't forgiven him yet. If he went to her, he risked ending up with nothing. On one summer day, Arthur decided to visit Diana. Luckily, as he parked near the house, he immediately recognized her. Arthur was anxious about how she would react to his proposal. But still, he approached her. Diana wasn't alone. She was pushing a stroller. Maybe she's working as a nanny, thought Arthur. Hello, he said. Arthur expected to see anger on his wife's face. Instead, Diana looked at him with a bright gaze, a soft smile on her face. Hello, she replied, continuing to work along the path. Arthur didn't anticipate such a reaction. After a moment, he followed her, walking slowly occasionally glancing at the babies in the stroller. They both looked at him with big blue eyes, resembling him a lot. But Arthur couldn't understand why he felt that way. Diana worked in a great mood. Arthur's appearance didn't disturb her. She could let him go. She could become whole again. Are you working? Arthur asked, not having any other assumptions in his mind about where the children might have come from. Working. Diana asked again. No. I'm taking a work with my children, so, like your own. He stopped and, placing his hand on the stroller handle, made his wife stop too. I would tell you everything, but I don't want to hear denial of the obvious. Diana replied and continued walking. Arthur's hand remained on the stroller handle. I think they look like me. He asked, fearing to look at Diana again. Arthur, they are your children too, but don't worry. I won't ask you for anything. Soon we can get divorced, and I won't hold you back, she said. Taking a stroll together with Diana, Arthur helped her bring the stroller into the apartment, and all his thoughts about inheriting wealth instantly vanished. He began to feel an invisible strength filling him, accompanied by a profound sense of remorse. He had just realized how much stronger this woman was than him and how full of love for the entire world she had become. Entering the apartment, Diana offered him tea. Then she told Arthur how she managed to get pregnant. Arthur was struck by the transformation in Diana. She became someone else, whole and strong. He was no longer her entire world. She didn't need him as she used to. It was horrifying to realize this. And when Arthur returned to his rented room, he desperately tried to find a way to bring everything back. Arthur started with small steps. Gradually, he began calling Diana every day, inquiring about her well-being and the children. He visited more often, bringing groceries with him. He asked if there was anything his wife or the children needed. His desire to restore the family was so strong that during each visit, he apologized to Diana. However, her response was always the same. Arthur, I forgave you a long time ago. Everything happening to us, we attract ourselves, and you are just one of the lessons in my life. I'm so glad I've passed it. A whole year passed during which Arthur visited Diana and the children every day. He continued to try to restore everything, though it seemed that nothing could be regained. Yet, he persisted in helping and visiting the family. One day, the twins fell with a high fever. The doctor came, examined the children, but there were no improvements. Diana was extremely nervous. Throughout this time, Arthur stood by her side, offering comforting words, and never ceasing to hope that their children would recover soon. Exhausted, Diana stayed by the crib night and day. One night, when she fell asleep sitting on a chair, Arthur moved her to the bed and covered her with a blanket. That night became a real trial for Arthur, 
revealing how much he treasured them and how strong his desire was to make his wife and children happy. Diana woke up at 10 in the morning. Seeing the time, she was afraid she had overslept. Checking the crib, she didn't find her children there. Fear pierced her chest. Afraid to learn the truth, she went to the kitchen. Silence prevailed, and only the faint sound of utensils clinking was heard. Diana listened, approached the kitchen door, peeked inside, and what did she see? Oh, miracle. Their sons were sitting peacefully on the carpet, playing with toys, while Arthur was setting the table. A wave of relief swept through Diana's entire body. At that moment, Arthur turned around. Oh, good morning. You're just in time. He cheerfully exclaimed. Is all this nightmare really over? Diana asked, approaching the children and kissing each on the cheeks. The doctor came this morning. Everything is fine, Arthur said, inviting her to sit down, placing breakfast on the table. Well, when did you learn this? Diana asked through laughter. Arthur approached, sincerely looking into his wife's eyes. My love, I can't live without you. You and the boys are the most precious things I have. Diana, be with me. He said softly, Arthur, I've always loved you and will continue to love you. You have no idea how happy I am that you're with me again. Diana replied, tears of joy streaming down her cheeks.